welcome back to Giving Day 2024. Yesterday was incredible and we're off to a great start, gearing up to have the biggest Giving Day in Ole Miss history. We've got a lot of work to do today though and we're just getting started. Let's go inside and let's finish strong. Dear Ole Miss family, my name is Samantha Seb, Daniel Connor, Joe Curry, Piper Lind, but you can call me Sam. I chose to attend the University of Mississippi because when I visited Oxford while attending my admitted student tour, it immediately felt like home. I always felt welcomed and celebrated. I'm originally from Australia, Mississippi, and when I first chose the University of Mississippi back in 2012, I was 18 years old. Ole Miss lifted me and provided me with the tools and resources to build my confidence and make a difference in the world around me. I completed an accounting degree, and actually, I was a Hall of Fame graduate. This year, my fellow students elected me as Miss Ole Miss. My education would not be possible without the support of the donors who have established a scholarship in their name. I've been able to focus solely on my education, my research, and my personal and career development. I was recently elected Mr. Ole Miss, and this would not have been possible without the support, guidance, and mentorship of individuals within the Honors College, Lot Leadership Institute, and the Ole Miss Women's Council. The majority of my educational experiences were covered through donor funding, and I'm extremely appreciative of those individuals who have helped me achieve my educational goals. Today is Giving Day. Giving Day is for everyone, not just major donors. If you're a donor, your funding and support allows students like me to take advantage of every educational opportunity at Ole Miss without the burden of having to worry about paying for our education. There are so many important programs to support today. In many ways, you can show your love for Ole Miss. From a $10 gift to a million dollar gift, Giving Day is for everyone who cares about the University of Mississippi. If you're already a donor, I hope you continue to give generously to what you love about Ole Miss. If you've never given back to the university before, today is the perfect day to start. Good morning, Rebs, and welcome to Giving Day, day two. If you were just now tuning in for the first time, my name is Emma Dickerson, and I have the honor of playing host for our Giving Day live stream. We are set up here in the Student Union, and we are excited for a what is sure to be an incredible day two. Um, before we jump into day two, though, I want to hear a little bit about how day one went. I'm joined with my friend Madeline. Madeline, how did we do yesterday? What are our numbers looking like? Who won these leaderboard challenges? Well, yesterday was an amazing day one mm -hmm. of Giving Day. Um, thank you so much to everyone who has donated and been involved. We could not have done it without you, so thank you so much. Um, so let's recap. Yes. We had a total of eight, over 1,800 gifts. Yes. Um, and over $2 million have already been raised, and that is wow. just incredible, insane. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to see what the end of day two is going to bring mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, if we have those numbers for day one, then there's no Who knows? Talent. Look. Possibilities are endless. I was trying to think of that <laughs> saying and I couldn't, so thank you. <laughs> um, so, and last night was also the Funkies Challenge. Yes. And um, the school, the Patterson School of Accountants. Oh, okay. We brought in a new character. Yes. New character for the plot. We've had yes. School of Law, School of Ed has been taking it away. Now we got School of Accountancy coming in mm -hmm. hot. Yeah, and so they were able to win the Funkies Challenge. And so yesterday was a great day. Mm -hmm. um, I know the School of Ed won a challenge, mm -hmm. and they had their big block party, which was a huge, huge success. Yes, um, even if it did have to be inside, yes. the bouncy house was still present. It was. And I've heard it was a, a lot of fun. Or something. Oh wow! No, they had it all, um, and I heard it was a great turnout. So awesome. we're super excited for day two and see all the fun stuff that's gonna happen. Cool. Yeah, I think we also set a record with how early we got to a hundred gifts or yes. something like that. Yes. Um, it was the earliest in the day that that's ever happened on mm -hmm. Giving Day. So we're already breaking records over here and that's gonna continue here on day two. Fortunately, we are just getting started. So today we have even more interviews with deans and campus officials. We have a violin performance. Yesterday we had a magic show. Um, and if you missed it's, it, you need to find the live stream and rewind and go the watch thing ever. the magic show because it was so fun. Um, and most importantly, we have more opportunities for you to maximize your gift through match and challenge gifts. So of course, we're gonna start off day two with our first leaderboard challenge of the day. We have the Nikki and Stuart Davis breakfast challenge. So here's how it works. The academic department or school that secures the most gifts between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. this morning will earn an additional $500 thanks to the generosity of Nikki and Stuart Davis of Oxford. 
So Revs, let's get up and moving this morning. Make your gift go farther by participating in this challenge. Remember, it's not the size of the gift that matters, but the number of gifts that matter. Head over to givingday.olemiss.edu. And remember, you can give through Venmo, Apple Pay, and all major credit cards. Madeline, before we sign off, what are you looking forward to most today? I don't know. Probably the violin performance. I am too. I'm pretty excited about that. Yes. I love a good musical Thing. Musical guest. Yes. A special yes, guest. A it's special. like SNL. It is like it's SNL. It's just like SNL, oh, except giving day. <laughs> and we're hosting. And we're hosting. Oh, perfect. We might even have a skit later. I don't know. We'll throw oh it in gosh, if it has to. I heard Orientation Dad might make an appearance. Oh, yes. So, yeah. We'll Be have sure to see if he wants You got to keep the live stream open because I heard that he might just pop in. When Whenever it, when it works for him, it. yeah, which feels accurate, which so. is very dad. Yes, so. very dad like. <laughs> I think he has some dad jokes lined up in his dad pocket oh, too. Perfect. So well, that'll I be can't great wait to hear a segment about can't wait. Jokes. Can't wait. So let's have a great day two of Giving Day, guys, and we will see you back at the top of the hour. Welcome back, Hotty Toddy. I want to speak here with Dean Cohen from the College of Liberal Arts. Dean Cohen, can you tell us a little bit about the College of Liberal Arts? Sure, yeah, so the, so the College of Liberal Arts is the largest academic unit on campus. Uh, we've got about 25% of the majors. Um, we've got about 50, a little over 50% of the, the faculty, um, and we cover a broad range of subject areas. So we, we cover the fine and performing arts, uh, the humanities, the social sciences, and the natural sciences and mathematics, and then we've got a number of interdisciplinary programs and, and centers, and we're also responsible for delivering the general education across campus, which, which reaches every student that's a, that is an undergrad with us. Wow, you have a lot of fields to cover. Um, what are some cool opportunities that students can do um, participating in Giving Day with the College of Liberal Arts? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think students are our greatest ambassadors. Mm -hmm. um, I know when we are, are talking to uh, alumni and friends, uh, we oftentimes bring students into those meetings so that our alumni can see all the wonderful things that students are doing. So I think students getting to encourage their, or, or helping to encourage their friends to participate, mm -hmm. and, and some can be social media influencers with us. So. Oh, fun. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the signing of the Turnit? In, Turn it, yeah, in yeah. the College of Liberal Arts. Yeah, so so my understanding is is that started many 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 years ago when Ventress Hall was mm -hmm. the law school and and the turret was not enclosed and and one of the students um, who I believe was in the military signed it and it became sort of a tradition for uh, other students to sign. Now it is enclosed and mm -hmm. uh, you know there's a lot of signatures in there and uh, there isn't a lot of room. For, for new signatures, so it is uh, kind of under lock and key mm -hmm. to kind of preserve the history, but, um, but that's how it all started. And every once in a while, we, we do allow uh, some students or, or alum to, to sign the turret. Yeah, awesome. Um, so with Giving Day, will there be an opportunity to sign it? Yeah, so last year was the first year that we mm -hmm. uh, ever had that as a, as a possibility. And, and there is a, a little competition that occurs, and I think we had, uh, I don't remember if it was three, four, five students mm -hmm. that, that had the opportunity to, to sign that, and uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. They got involved, and then they got to come and, and sign their name along with uh, a lot of prominent other names, like uh, uh, former Governor Mabus, uh, former Governor Winter, um, and there's lots and lots of other. Mm -hmm. I know supposedly Eli Manning ha <laughs> has signed the turret. I, I have not seen it. There's so many names in there, but someone uh, can y'all yeah. can do a scavenger hunt That's right. up That's there. Right. Um, so, how can people get involved with Giving Day? Yeah. So uh, again, I think encouraging friends to participate. Mm -hmm. I think that that people uh, sometimes underestimate uh, how impactful any gift can be. Mm -hmm. Right. So I know sometimes when we're meeting with people, they say, "Well, I can't really give a lot," but you know, I think giving early, so when you're a student, uh, when you become mm -hmm. a, a young alum, uh, small gifts add up to large gifts, and, and we, need, we need all the help we can get. We have a lot of support from our administration and the state, but uh, to do all the things that we're trying to do, um, more, more support is helpful. Oh, of course. Um, so what impact do your donors have on the school of, College of Liberal Arts? Yeah, yeah. so uh, a huge impact. I mean, I think that our, our donors and alum and friends are, are uh, amazed when they come back and they hear about all the, the the strong academic programs that we have, and and so we usually 
have our students and our faculty mm -hmm. share what it is they're doing and and that usually leads to them supporting things so it, it helps our students um, be able to do, get international experiences it helps our students get research experiences um, you know I mean in, in for our for our graduate programs uh, to be competitive we need to offer stipends and and uh, alumni giving has helped with that mm -hmm. um, facility so we've got a, a new stem building that's that's mm -hmm. going to be opening up and um, you know, having the, the, the top-notch equipment in those spaces right. uh, is going to be every bit as important as having mm -hmm. that beautiful new facility that's mm -hmm. going to open up. That's so exciting. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the importance of size of gift versus, um, you know, kind of the number of gifts? Yeah, sure. So obviously both are very <laughs> important. Uh, but, but like I said earlier, you know, I think people sometimes underestimate the impact of, of even, you know, a, a smaller gift, a $25 mm -hmm. gift. Right. I mean, when you get lots of $25 gifts, uh, that, adds that adds up, up. pretty quickly. Uh, and so large gifts are great, small gifts are mm -hmm. great. And really for, for Giving Day, the, I think a goal that, that we have is to get more people uh, giving and, and understanding how important giving is to their alma mater or their, right. their current institution. Right. Yeah. Um, so what would you like to say to the people who have already made a gift? Yeah, so I, I would just say thank you. Uh, <laughs> it, we've been talking about how important that support is. Uh, that support really does help us take our programs to the next level, helps us retain and support the faculty and, and students and staff that we have. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And is there anything you would like to add before we go? No, I think I think that, that covers it. Just uh, it's great to be part of, of Giving Day, and, and we hope that uh, we'll have many alumni and friends uh, help, help us uh, reach our goals. Well, thank you so much, Dean Cohen. It was great talking to you today. And remember, Rebel Nation, it's not the size of the gifts, but the number of gifts that count today. The time is now. Make a gift and help your favorite areas around campus. Gifts can be made through Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, and all major credit cards. To make a gift, visit givingday.olemiss.edu. Help us spread the word once you've given and post about it on social media using the hashtag Ole Miss Giving Day. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please come back for more Giving Day content. Thank you for all of your gifts for our 2024 Giving Day for the Sally McDonald Barstale Honors College. Your gifts will make a difference today and for generations to come. Thanks. Thank you for your gift on Giving Day 2024. The most important thing we do here at the law school is focus on our students. When you give, you help our students succeed. And that success transforms lives. Thank you for all you do for our students. Thank you for your gift to the School of Pharmacy during Giving Day 2024. Your gift, along with the gift of others, makes a huge impact for our School of Pharmacy and for the university, now and for generations to come. Thank you for your support and hotty toddy. I want to thank every one of you who have responded to our Giving Day Fund Appeal with deep and sincere gratitude for the difference you're making. Our supporters not only sustain us, they inspire us. And your generosity will notably advance the missions of our acclaimed academic museum and our National Historic Landmark Literary Heritage Site. Thank you so much. Ooh, what's that I spy? A golden little statement piece could spice up your life. Your 8 a.m. lecture crush won't be able to keep their eyes off you with this shiny red and gold Lyceum lapel pin dazzling in the fluorescent lights of the classroom. All it takes is a monthly recurring donation. Just select recurring at checkout and this fine piece of jewelry is all yours. What is up Ole Miss? And welcome back to a very special Giving Day episode of Walking with Champions. As always, I am your host, Lucas Sweeney, and today we are joined by Sam Sepp, who is someone who has been personally impacted by the gifts donated to the university. Sam, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you so much for having me. Oh, no problem. So, just to get started, first question, could you just tell us why Ole Miss? How did you end up here? 
So coming from 13 hours away in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I thought that I had to get out of the state of Pennsylvania. Um, after applying to almost every school on the East Coast, it felt like I came to Mississippi for the very first time in my life. I had a tour. I cried on my tour. I was so impacted by the community, the beautiful campus, and everything that Ole Miss stood for. I had to accept right then and there, and I've never turned away since. Wow, the, the campus, it will truly bring you to tears. Yes, yes, it does, still to this day, still to this day. Oh, nice, all right, and then how has Giving Day and the gifts of Giving Day been able to impact you personally? Yeah, so Giving Day has impacted me personally as I'm a School of Education um, student. Recently, I was awarded a scholarship, the Bill and Sylvia Florian Scholarship in the School of Education, where I was able to pursue my collegiate career due to the financial aid that they supported me with. They are alumni who are so passionate about education, as am I, so it allowed me to be able to continue to pursue my dreams. All right, and then what would you say to encourage someone who is unsure about giving a gift to the university? Um, if someone was unsure about giving a gift to the university, honestly, I would say put yourself in the student's shoes. There's so many people on our campus. Although we are the smallest SEC school, we have the largest sense of community and family here. And if you put yourself in someone else's shoes, you would want them to be able to pursue the collegiate career that where they may be a first generation or third generation college student. And giving even $1 or $500, you'll be able to help somebody succeed in their college career. Wonderful. And then last question, just could you tell us what are your plans after graduation? So after graduation, I will be staying here for grad school as a graduate assistant in the School of Education, as well as interning with the student ministry crew. Wow. All right. Well, good luck with all of that. Thank Exciting you. Exciting stuff coming up. And then before we sign off today, is there anything else you want to say to the folks at home? I would say just think about the others and hotty toddy. All right. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure. And you guys, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all of the episodes of Walking with Champions. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. This year, for Ole Miss Giving Day 2024, we are thrilled to highlight a few areas in the School of Business that many students utilize. As Ole Miss continues to shatter enrollment records, there's an ongoing need of support for student services, along with career preparation services and faculty and staff support. The Ole Miss School of Business is reaching new heights and approaching 5,000 students. With that, we are asking for your generosity in supporting many needs, including obtaining laptops for all of our business school advisors so that they can meet our students right where they are. We are also asking for support of our career preparation services, including providing opportunities for our students to go on exciting career treks and utilize new technology in the search for future career opportunities. Dean Syrie has initiated a challenge gift to highlight the importance of supporting faculty and staff within the School of Business. Our amazing faculty help inspire our students to make discoveries that will help them succeed throughout their life. Faculty are the force multipliers, so using our resources to hire outstanding faculty impacts hundreds of students per semester. We are so excited for the opportunity that this day can provide to our students, faculty, and staff. As a student myself, I greatly appreciate the kindness of our alumni and friends and can't thank you enough for your support. Hotty toddy. I think anybody who looks at Ole Miss first will say this is a, uh, this is a model program for helping students who need assistance to achieve the goals that they can achieve. Ole Miss First is a wonderful scholarship, but beyond that, it has offered me the opportunity to meet new people. So I was able to learn all the wonderful opportunities here in the Austin community. That being community service, whether through St. Peter's or Leapfrog, I've learned all those through Ole Miss First. Ole Miss First is really kind of like a little community, and a lot of the speakers and their messages have like really stuck with me. So it's definitely very impactful. I think that Ole Miss First has really helped me get a community of people outside like my small group of classes and I think that I could not have really blended into Ole Miss near as well without this scholarship. This is an opportunity for us to really invest in an important 
productive, successful program, you can think about, as we did, putting Ole Miss first and support this program. Thank you. Thank you.
Welcome back, Rebs. I am joined da down. It's too early for me to have hiccups like this. I'm joined now by Angela Brown. She is the Senior Director of Development for the School of Business. Angela, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, what is your favorite part about Giving Day? You know, I've been a part of Giving Day since it started uh, here at Ole Miss and in the development office, and I've really enjoyed watching uh, the School of Business come together, not only as our donors come together, but our faculty and staff and our students to support the university um, in all ways. Mm -hmm. What are your um, some of the fundraising priorities for the School of Business this year? Sure. We have a number of priorities for the year, but I'd like to focus on the ones that we have for Giving Day today. Okay. Uh, we have three that our dean has really decided to bring forth to our donor base uh, and in Giving Day. We're focusing on one initiative that Dean Syree, uh, our, our dean of business, has that is true to his heart, is, is supporting our faculty, mm -hmm. making sure that our faculty, which are the root of our education for our students, um, right. are, are here to provide with for our students um, the best they possibly can. Mm -hmm. They are the best resource mm -hmm. to our students. Absolutely. Um, so faculty support is our number one initiative. Okay. Our other two areas that we're focusing on for the rest of Giving Day today, one being uh, career prep. So okay. career preparation we have in the School of Business. We are one of the only schools on the campus that has its own career preparation team. Wow. Um, and so those teams of uh, individuals, employees for the School of Business, mm -hmm. they support all 5,000 of our business students, mm -hmm. specifically wow. to find the value add. What mm -hmm. are you doing after education? Mm -hmm. What are you doing after Ole Miss? Um, and so funding for that, funding for career preparation, meaning experiential learning opportunities mm -hmm. for our students, uh, traveling to career treks and allowing them to experience opportunities at companies and industries that maybe they wouldn't have before. Mm -hmm. So that's career prep. The other initiative that we are focusing on is bringing our advising office to every single one of our business students. Mm -hmm. So advising at the School of Business has never had a fund before. Oh, wow. And so this is our first year to really focus on fundraising for them and mm -hmm. finding philanthropic support for the advising office to support our students where they are. Right. That's great. You mentioned career prep. And yesterday I had the opportunity to talk to Nancy Mariah from the Arts, Art Institute and she talked about some of the opportunities her students are afforded to travel and recently they went to New York and got to meet with composers and see Broadway shows and really immerse themselves in the lives of what this will be post-graduation sure. and I feel like career prep is very integral in that and I feel like with especially school of business I graduated with a IMC degree but sometimes that feels like so much opportunity but also an overwhelm of sure. opportunity because you don't know how to tailor that sure. so I feel like career prep is a great way to help students kind of whittle that down into okay what do I want to do with this degree when I move past here yes and ultimately it's exposure <laughs> yeah it's exposing our students so um, we have a, a supporter uh, of the School of Business and alum of the School of Business that has established a challenge mm -hmm. wow. to our uh, donor base for today mm -hmm. and that challenge is to help fund career preparation mm -hmm. services whether that be to take students to Nashville Tennessee mm -hmm. to Dallas Texas on buses and show them physically what is it like to work there in yes. a company? What is your day-to-day -day like? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's Something great. Something outside of the classroom. Yes, exactly. I feel like what helped me a lot was being a GA during um, un or during grad school when I was getting my master's degree. And I always told people it was so fascinating to just live the life of a professional that works in this every day. So that's really important. Yes. So aside from, obviously, our incredible faculty, the resources we provide to students, we have one of the best business schools in the country in my mind. I'm going to be biased a little bit, but what do you think sets our business school apart from other schools across the nation? Yes, I think we have students now seeking Ole Miss business. Mm -hmm. They are coming to the University of Mississippi for Ole Miss business. Mm -hmm. That has shown in our student class size. So mm -hmm. our growth in the business school, we have just now topped 5,000 students. I had no idea growth. that there were that many, that many business yes, students. That's yes, that's incredible. Yes. It is wonderful. We are right there with liberal arts, which um, it, it's always fun to kind of push. Dean yeah. Yeah, of course. Bit. Some um, friendly competition. It is. It is. Um, and I've, I've been around the university for some time now, mm -hmm. um, and my undergraduate is with the School of Business, so mm -hmm. I have seen the business school transform, which has been awesome, not only in my student career here mm -hmm. at Ole Miss, but also as an, uh, um, an employee of the university. I think that what sets us apart is that we are, we have such a strong alumni base. Right. And our University of Mississippi alumni from the School of Business are hands-on with our students. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are giving our students opportunities that our students would not have otherwise if they were at any other institution. Yes. Yep. And that's also kind of the beauty of Oxford in general, because we have a lot of alumni who graduate and stay in this community and 
not only the our alumni across the country, but here locally, we have people that are ready to pour back into the yes. schools that they graduated from, which yes. is always super exciting. I think we, we provide a network for our yes. students at the School of Business that allow them to comfortably and easily reach out when they're a sophomore and they mm -hmm. know that they can call that alum and have that family friendly rebel family member yes. um, from the business school and say, I just want to experience an internship over the yeah. summer. Can you please lead me in the right direction? And maybe right. their company doesn't have that opportunity for the student at that time, right. but they're going to point to the next Rebel family member. Exactly, exactly. So you mentioned one of the leaderboard challenges you guys have today or challenges you have for the um, career prep. Yes. What other challenges are you excited about? What other things you have going on today at, this, at the school business? Yes. You know, something that uh, is uh, very impressive, I think, is an, a, a young, along fa young alum family of the School of Business uh, and uh, the real estate program and mm -hmm. department, they have established a $25,000 scholarship oh, wow. challenge. Um, they graduated in 18 and 19, mm -hmm. and they are pouring back into the university. And that is a challenge to increase scholarship dollars to the That's business incredible. school. That's incredible. We talk a lot about how Giving Day is to benefit the right now. It's impacting students on campus today. So that's that's absolutely incredible. Is there anything else you want to shout out before we sign off? Sure. You know, today the Dean has challenged all of our School of Business board members, our volunteers, those on seven different boards that cover the School of Business. And he has challenged them to participate. He wants 100% participation from all of our board members. And I think really seeing that group of individuals that are leaders on our campus and at the School of Business Step up. I hope that that encourages you as an alum and a university friend to also make a gift today. Yes, absolutely. So remember, Giving Day is a perfect opportunity to maximize your gift through our match and challenge gifts. Head on over to givingday.olemiss.edu to give now, and we will see you back at the top of the hour. Hotty toddy.
The Ole Miss Pride of the South Marching Band is the largest student organization on campus. Band members spend hours practicing to provide the dynamic musical performances that make game day experiences so memorable. They do it for the love of Ole Miss and for the love of music. Scholarships help pay band students tuition so they can pursue music or countless other degrees. Your support on Giving Day will ensure more band scholarships will be funded. And our talented band students want to thank donors for their new practice field. Ole Miss has a free counseling center for students at the University of Mississippi. The University Counseling Center, located in Lester Hall, helps more than 500 students per semester. However, this counseling center has less than 10 staff members licensed and trained to work with clients. Your contribution to the University Counseling Center on Giving Day will help hire more staff to assist Ole Miss students through these services.
Welcome back, Rebs. Um, before the break, we received some incredibly exciting news that our third marquee gift has come in. A $4 million gift from Jean and Jerry Jordan has just come in for the School of Journalism and New Media. And fortunately for us, we are now joined by Mr. Jordan himself, along with the Dean of the School of Journalism and New Media, Dean Hickerson. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I have the first question for you, Mr. Jordan. What inspired you to make this incredibly generous gift to the School of Journalism? Well, you know, my wife, Jean, and I taught hundreds of students here. Mm -hmm. And they're great students, but even more importantly, great people. And mm -hmm. so we're giving the gift in their honor. But Emma, that's not the reason we're giving the gift. Okay. The reason we're giving the gift is because our society is being torn apart by misinformation, mm -hmm. bad journalism. Mm -hmm. And who better to fix it than journalists? Yep. And so... We're establishing the center mm -hmm. to try to bring integrity back to all forms of news media because mm -hmm. we need it in this country. Mm -hmm. And so the center will find ways to do that. And mm -hmm. the flip side of it is the consumers mm -hmm. of journalism. We want to make sure that in our society, people are educated to identify misinformation, mm -hmm. know where to go for good sources of truth, mm -hmm. and to appreciate those sources. And so they're kind of two purposes there for the center. Right, right, awesome. Dean Hickerson, what does this gift mean for the School of Journalism? This gift for the School of Journalism is completely transformational. Um, it's incredibly validating, I think, for the history of the school and um, how we've trained journalists historically. And then it really is a great nod to the future. And what it does for us is it elevates us in a national conversation about the future of journalism um, because it lets us advocate for it and show the community, both in Mississippi and beyond, that journalism is intensely practical. Mm -hmm. And here at the University of Mississippi, we're doing innovative things to promote the practice and make sure that it's here for generations to come. Right, right, incredible. Um, Mr. Jordan, you mentioned this, but the gift will establish the Jordan Center for Journalism Advocacy and the Innovation Fund. Right. So can you touch on a little bit more about what the purpose of the center is and a little more about the Innovation Fund? Well, we want the School of Journalism to be the most innovative school of journalism in the country. Mm -hmm. And we have all the confidence in the world that Dean Hickerson can pull that off. We, Absolutely. We're really pleased that she's our new dean here. Mm -hmm. She also happens, by the way, to be my next door neighbor. Hey, look at how that worked out. <laughs> did you go Did you go do some knocking on the door like, hey, we could use some funds. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> but we hope to convene a, a conference of national news leaders to determine ways, kind of a think tank, to figure out ways to bring integrity to our news media, including social media. Uh, and we, have, we hope to have a collaboration with the local schools to educate high school students on identifying misinformation, deep fakes, responsible use of social media, and, and that sort of thing. Incredible, incredible. So kind of getting off topic for just a moment, Dean Hickerson, what are some of the other important fundraising priorities happening now at the School of Journalism and New Media? Oh, it's, it's a terribly exciting time in the School of Journalism and New Media. Um, and this gift is just, it, it skyrockets us to, to the top of things. But we have just moved to a departmental model, which we're really excited about. Um, and then the mo thing I'm really excited about is a new journalism experience fund that we're starting because we want to be able to support students that need some help going on an internship or maybe 
going to study abroad. We want to be able to help them out so that opportunities are available to others as well. Right. That has been a common thread in a lot of these interviews that I've mm -hmm. had. Um, I had one with Miss Nancy Mariah Bolish mm -hmm. yesterday and then with Angela Brown from the School of Business about providing opportunities for students to kind of exist in the world of the career they're choosing. Right. Um, and with Angela, we talked about the School of Business and I graduated with both the ma Master's and Bachelor's in IMC. Mm -hmm. And one of the wonderful things about IMC is there is so much opportunity, but that can often feel overwhelming because Absolutely. you don't know how to whittle that down into your chosen career path. Absolutely. So any opportunity for students to be able to travel, intern, whatever it might be, to help them kind of make those decisions as they take the next step is incredible and very Absolutely. beneficial to yeah. them. Yeah, and you know, IMC is growing just in general mm -hmm. and particularly on campus. We're the largest major right now on campus. And um, a great thing and a great tie to the center in journalism is mm -hmm. that we're hoping that the center can really do IMC for journalism yes. um, and really get it out there as a campaign. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Jordan, back to you. What do you think, what is your hope for the future of the School of Journalism here on campus? Well, you may th think it's a far-flung hope, but I hope we have a demonstrable effect on society. Okay. I hope we change our society for the better, and mm -hmm. I hope it happens right here at Ole Miss. Yeah, absolutely. Dean Hickerson, what about you? Oh, I can't argue with that. I mean, we have big <laughs> ambitions and, you know, the Jordan family gift has allowed us to think bigger than we ever could have. And it is, I have such gratitude um, for the family and the faith that they put of us in the school to, mm -hmm. to see what's possible. So, right. um, I mean, I feel like the sky's the limit, but our ambitions are big and they're larger than Mississippi. Right. Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to shout out before we sign off? I'd like to give a special shout out to the Student Media Center too. Yes. So the Student Media Center is um, in the School of Journalism and New Media and when I talk to alumni and when I talk to current students that is such a key um, initiative that they've had to socialize with the university mm -hmm. and so if you can show them a love we'd appreciate that too. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us and Mr. Jardin thank you again for this incredibly generous gift. What a day it has been already. Day two of Giving Day. Uh, we will be back at the top of the hour. Thank you for joining us. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy. Welcome back, Rebs, uh, to the Giving Day interviews. Today I'm here with Dr. Mead from the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement, um, and we're just going to talk today about what Giving Day means to them. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about DCE? Yeah, so the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement was created in 2017, mm -hmm. and so we're fairly new still on campus, but our role here is really to just create partnership and access and engagement opportunities for students, faculty, and staff. So ultimately our goal is to ensure the success of students, mm -hmm. um, faculty, and staff, and so providing resources and programs and services mm -hmm. to help eliminate any barriers that mm -hmm. might uh, exist. Um, and just create, you know, create opportunities to help get them right. to the finish line and, yeah. and reach whatever potential or success mm -hmm. looks like for them. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. It's so important to have that Absolutely. foundation in Absolutely. college, especially when you're away from everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so what are the things y'all are working on this year? Yeah, so um, so we have a, a institutional-wide uh, strategic plan. Mm -hmm. It's called Pathways to Equity. So it really nice. outlines a lot of our goals. Um, some of those include expanding our cohort-based programs mm -hmm. and so creating more opportunities for students to have that closer-knit um, mentoring support. Mm -hmm. So like you said, a home away from home, right? So right. just to really create that sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of our big things. We've mm -hmm. been, uh, we, we just recently finished um, celebrating the 60th anniversary of integration. Oh my goodness. Um, and so we did a lot of work around just reconciliation and repair and making sure that 
um, the universities uh, welcoming and inclusive you know to mm -hmm. all members of the campus community we're doing a lot of work around faculty success mm -hmm. and providing grants and resources for right. faculty to reach tenure mm -hmm. to pursue various research outlets um, so those are some of, the, some of the things I'm really excited about. Uh, we're working on some more women leadership uh, initiatives. Oh, that's and so, awesome. Um, providing uh, some retreats and mm -hmm. mentoring programs for women in leadership mm -hmm. roles, uh, and those who are pursuing leadership opportunities. So there's a few things. Yeah. So a few? Lots that of, sounds like a lot. <laughs> there's, there's always something <laughs> going on, but just lots of different ways. Essentially, it all boils down to just the success mm -hmm. of our people, right? right? And so making sure that our faculty, our staff, our students mm -hmm. are engaged and they mm -hmm. have the resources they need to uh, reach their full potential. Right. Oh my gosh. Well, that yeah. sounds amazing. It sounds like y'all have a lot of awesome things going on that we a lot of people could get involved with. Yeah. Um, so how can people get involved with Yeah. Them? So I have a great team and so they, they really um, keep us busy and keep, you know, make lots of opportunities to, mm -hmm. for engagement. So there's always something, like you said, to, mm -hmm. to get involved with. Um, but certainly there's volunteering through uh, some of our uh, different community engagement. Um, efforts so that's from service you're thinking about like your traditional like volunteering we have give posts mm -hmm. which is a great way to just get connected to the local um, community so that if you are interested in serving or volunteering right. that's a great way to get connected and get engaged mm -hmm. um, we have lots of different training and development opportunities and um, workshops and so just there's always something we have an all-in all-year calendar mm -hmm. of events and so that's a great way just to see what's happening mm -hmm. across the division and ways that get, people can get plugged in. Wow so there yeah. are a lot of ways that people can get involved Absolutely. and help out. Absolutely and the great thing is one of the things we always say like if you have an idea mm -hmm. and we really thrive off this we created a program a couple of years ago called Open Doors and it was mm -hmm. a student idea open um, and so open doors really came out of a student coming mm -hmm. to us with an idea about you know how do I get to know our administration more mm -hmm. um, you know more intimately and right. and so open doors grew out of that mm -hmm. one you know idea and so we're, we're always open and welcome mm -hmm. new ideas collaboration right. and partnership is really just the mm -hmm. core of who we are as a division that's awesome and I know the students really appreciate you know having people to listen to their ideas yeah. you know because students are full of them absolutely <laughs> <laughs> um, so why is Giving Day so important to y'all? Well, Giving Day really, we, we, it really helps us expand, you know, the, the amount of research, the, the amount of support and resources that we can provide. And so, you know, when we have a student that comes to us that just needs, you know, maybe a little money, mm -hmm. right, to buy a book. Right. Um, so we have an inclusive excellence retention fund to help with those sort of emergency purchases. And that, like, you know, $100, $200 here, there goes so far. Or, or if it's a student needing yeah. a scholarship, right, if that's the difference in getting to that finish line, mm -hmm. to graduating. And we know that that is going to just change the trajectory of their lives. Yeah, and so yeah. that support that we get um, on Giving Day in particular mm -hmm. is just crucial to us being able mm -hmm. to meet the needs of our, of, our, uh, of our student body. Right. And it's so exciting to see you know them come so far Absolutely. you know and meet their goals yes that's right yeah oh yeah that's <laughs> that's like graduation is definitely one of my favorite you, you know, know days because I, I, yeah, like I know time. yeah because you you know like what it's mm -hmm. taken for some students to get there mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so where do you see the dce in the next few years well, like I mentioned, we're, we're a fairly new division still, mm -hmm. and so we're less than 10 years old. Right. Um, our Center for Inclusion and Cross-Cultural Engagement will actually sort of celebrate its 10-year anniversary this oh, summer. Oh, congratulations. So, Happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank you. And so it's still fairly new, and so mm -hmm. we've been able to accomplish a lot in that time frame. I'm really proud of that. Um, and we still know there's so much more work to do and, and really support on Giving Day and other um, you know, alumni support. It really does help us, you know, just continue to build and grow mm -hmm. and uh, advance those goals that we've outlined um, in Pathways to Equity, but also more importantly, just being responsive to yeah. the needs of our students, our faculty, our staff, and our community mm -hmm. members as well um, who, who come to us and, you know, and, and there, there's a need, then having that financial support really does allow us to help fill those gaps. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the import importance of size of gift versus number of gifts? Well, any gift <laughs> is a good gift, okay? Uh, so any gift, any amount, uh, you know, whatever that is, whatever a, a donor is willing to give, is mm -hmm. able to give, we appreciate it. And it, they all go directly to the support of, mm -hmm. of students. Um, and so I think the, the size of a gift certainly helps us 
you know, expand sort of the scope of programs, scale programs. Mm -hmm. um, like our most conference, thankfully, we were able to uh, move from hosting one session to now hosting two every summer, right? And so mm -hmm. that means 400 more students that are able to come right. to campus and engage on the campus. Mm -hmm. So those are the larger gifts that allow us to do that. And so we really appreciate that and it really mm -hmm. helps, you know, impact our reach on the campus and the, the amount of support that we're able to offer. I think the smaller gifts and the more donors just means that more folks are aware and mm -hmm. are connecting um, and engaged with the work that we're doing, mm -hmm. however big or small. And so we really appreciate you know, any gift uh, right. of any size and we, most importantly, we're gonna be good stewards of that gift mm -hmm. and we will make sure that it goes directly to the benefit of students. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, so is there anything you would like to say to the people who've already donated? Just thank you. Um, we are tremendously just grateful for your gratitude, um, um, for, I'm sorry, for your generosity. Um, for, um, we, I personally just have seen the benefits of um, the, how these gifts have impacted just the lives of students, just to be able to help them again get to that finish line. And so we are so grateful just for your support um, and hope that you, know, you can engage with DCE. We'd love to partner in any way, um, but just thank you. Well, thank y'all. <laughs> um, so is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? Well, you know, thank you for this opportunity. And <laughs> well, we really, you. again, just really appreciate anyone, mm -hmm. any size of gift, um, um, just to help make sure that we're able to help make sure this university um, is an, a welcoming and inclusive place for everyone, where everyone mm -hmm. has the resources, the tools that they need to be successful and ultimately reach their goals um, mm -hmm. and get to the finish line, which mm -hmm. may, you know, graduation, tenure, promotion, whatever that is for them, like just whatever that success means for them. Our goal is to make sure that we're helping folks um, get there and, and, and in, a, in an environment that's welcoming, where they feel a sense of belonging and feel included and mm -hmm. can see themselves represented in the university. And so mm -hmm. thank you for just helping us um, fulfill our mission and support the mission of the university in that way. Perfect. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, Dr. Mead, for joining us today. It is so important for all of our students to feel included and feel like they belong here on this campus. So thank, thank you. you so much for what you do. Thank you. Um, thank thank you. you so much for the donors, and we'll see you on the next interview. Remember, Rebel Nation, it's not the size of the gifts, but the number of gifts that count today. The time is now. Make a gift and help your favorite areas around campus. Gifts can be made through Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, and all major credit cards. To make a gift, visit givingday.olemiss.edu. Help us spread the word once you've given and post about it on social media using the hashtag Ole Miss Giving Day. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please come back for more Giving Day content. Thank you for contributing to the School of Journalism and New Media on Giving Day. Your gift will make a meaningful impact today and beyond. Hello, I'm Julia Aubrey, director of the Ford Center. Thank you so much for your donations on Giving Day. We're looking forward to having the opportunity to see new spotlights in our theater. And thank you for everything that you do for the arts. We are grateful for your continued support of the Patterson School of Accountancy during Giving Day 2024. Your gifts, along with the generosity of others, combine to make a lasting impact on the lives of Ole Miss students now and for generations to come. Thank you for your support. I want to thank you for your gifts to the Division of Outreach during Giving Day 2024. Your continued support helps generations of Mississippians. You help us provide high quality learning experiences that are designed to appeal to a wider variety of Ole Miss students, including working parents, place-bound individuals, and people re-entering college after a significant time away from their studies. Thanks again for helping students from elementary age to college to lifelong learning. Hello Ole Miss and welcome back to a very special Giving Day episode of Walking with Champions. Today I am here with Daniil Connor who has been directly affected by the gifts donated to the University of Mississippi. Daniil, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank how you. How are you doing today? Doing well. I've got, got a great day out here and we're super excited to talk to you a little bit today. Alright, cool. So for my first question, just could you tell me what exactly brought you to Ole Miss? 
Long story short, um, Ole Miss was definitely not like the first school I was thinking about coming to, to okay. be very honest. Had some schools out of state, had another school in Mississippi that I was thinking about as well. And to be very honest, it was the Ole Miss Women's Council for Philanthropy, which is my scholarship group that I'm a part of. And in addition to that, the Simon McDonald Barksdale Honors College and the Trent Lott Leadership Program. Those were the three things that brought me here to Ole Miss that have had such an impact on me as a student here at Ole Miss. All right, very cool. Well, how has Giving Day affected you and the, the Giving Day gifts and everything? How, how have they personally been able to impact you? Yeah, I mean, through the scholarships and through the special programs that I've been a part of, I've been able to take advantage of, you know, not only allowing myself to grow as a student and as a leader, but I've also been able to encourage other students to come to Ole Miss and in a way, allow them to grow as well too. And the gifts that we give to the university allow us to pour into the future students that come behind us. And in many ways, that allows us to grow our impact not only on the state of Mississippi, but also the entire country as well. Very nice. And what would, what would you want to say to someone to you know, encourage them into sending in a gift if they're feeling a little bit unsure about the whole thing? Yeah, I mean, these gifts are so important to our success as a university, right? With the gifts that you provide us, we're able to ensure that students who come to Ole Miss and not have to worry financially about you know, paying for school or even just ensuring that we can bring the brightest and the best of students right here to the University of Mississippi, right here in Mississippi. And that's what we want, right, here at the University of Mississippi. So we want to attract the best of the best, but also ensure that we can help students from all different backgrounds come right here, allow them to grow as not only as a student, but as a leader, and then from there, take on the world, whatever they need to do. Okay, and what are your plans after you graduate? Yeah, so currently right now I'm kind of deciding between some job offers between Jackson, Nashville, Washington DC, and New York City. So still trying to decide. I mean, I'm about to graduate here in May, so it's coming up very soon. But thankfully I have offers in these four cities that I'm trying to kind of decide between right now at the moment. Um, but to be determined, I'm taking that gap year before law school and we'll be working for just a little bit of time. All right, very cool. A lot of exciting stuff along the way yeah. for you. All right, I know. well. Before we sign off today, is there anything else you want to say to the people at home or the people who sent in gifts in the past? Yeah, I know, but thank you for all that you have done to allow us to grow as a university. In many ways, your gifts are so important to the student success here at the University of Mississippi, and I hope that you'll pitch into something today to help grow not only our university, but our entire student body here. All right, well, Daniil, once again, thank you yeah. so much for joining us thank today. You. It's been a real pleasure. And you guys, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more episodes of Walking with Champions. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Thanks. Dr. Donald R. Cole and Dr. Maurice Eftink, past leaders of the graduate school, valued the recruitment, retention, and success of all students including those underrepresented in graduate education and the professoriate. We created the Cole Efting Fellows Program to honor their legacy and continue their important work. I'm Roger Davis, Jr. from Anguilla, Mississippi, and I'm a third year PhD student in higher education. The Cole Efting Fellowship Program has impacted my academic journey in various ways. Immediately stepping on the campus of the University of Mississippi and receiving this fellowship has allowed me to have a network of support our Cole Efting Fellows participate in a number of professional development opportunities, including formal and informal networking. So the Cole Efting Fellowship has allowed me to become aware of many different opportunities for doctoral students like myself. In the summer of 2022, I was able to get a junior fellowship internship at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And I've also been able to meet different uh, people across the campus um, and in the community that have played a big part in um, essentially the success of the University of Mississippi. I want to personally thank all of the generous supporters of the Cole F. Ting Graduate Fellowship. We thank you for supporting the Cole F. Ting Fellows Fund on Giving Day. At the University of Mississippi School of Pharmacy, we believe in the power of education to transform lives and shape the future of healthcare. Our commitment to excellence has consistently earned us a spot among the top 25 schools nationally, and we remain among the top 20 in federal research funding. Our faculty and students have been recognized nationally and internationally, and our alumni make us proud every day with their accomplishments and the impact they have in their communities. Our school's accomplishments are a testament to the dedication of the entire School of Pharmacy community. Including the support of individuals who share our passion 
for advancing pharmacy education. Please consider giving a gift today that will serve as an investment in not only our school, but also the health and well-being of communities across the nation in the years to come.
James Earl Jones, Morgan Freeman, B.B. King, Marty Stewart, John McCain, Barack Obama, England's Prince Edward, Marvis Staples, Renee Fleming, and King Abdullah of Jordan all have something in common. They have appeared at the Gertrude C. Ford Center for the Performing Arts. For more than 20 years, the region's premier performing venue has hosted an average of 150 events annually. Your support on Giving Day will help continue the Ford Center's excellence for another 20 years. The Grove Grocery seeks to address campus hunger and poverty at the University of Mississippi by discreetly providing nutritious food and hygiene products free of charge to Ole Miss students and employees. In 2023, the Grove Grocery distributed 17,890 meals and more than 8,000 patrons visited the food pantry. Your support to Grove Grocery on Giving Day can help ensure no one goes without proper nutrition.
Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream, Rebs. I'm joined now by Kelly Marion. She is the Director of Development for the School of Education. And we just heard that the School of Ed won the first leaderboard challenge this Yay. morning. <laughs> Way to go. How many gifts did y'all end up racking up? Um, in the challenge itself, yes. I think it was 40 gifts. Okay. But we are at 439 donors right wow. now. Wow, just to the School of Journal. I mean, School, uh, school of Education. That's correct. Incredible. Yes. That's so yeah. great. And so y'all also had your uh, carnival yesterday. Yeah. I know it got rained out. It was supposed to be on Guyton Plaza. But how did it go? Yeah. We had to move it to the JAC. What, how did it go? It was still amazing. Was and it? actually, it was kind of a blessing because it was a lot easier for our Willie Price families and the kids to get yeah. there and to park and just to have a really good time inside. Right. Right. We had Taylor Grocery and Snowbiz that came Yum. and provided food. Oh that gosh. was a really big hit. We had yeah. an inflatable um, T-ball, and Ooh, the um, Center for Math and Science Education brought not only their robots, uh -huh. but an inflatable planetarium. I heard that there was a planetarium. Yes, it That's was. Incredible. It was so cool because they set it up where um, they had shows. So every 30 minutes or so, there was a solar show, uh -huh. and the little kids that see the sign that says, "Oh, the next show is in 10 minutes," they're like, "Mom." Dad, take me How to the show. Fun. It was it was really really cool. We had That's kindness great. club that made friendship bracelets. We had That's a fine. really active thank you note writing station. It was just an incredible showing of what the School of Ed has to offer, but yeah. also a celebration of philanthropy. Yeah, and what an incredible way to bring the community in. Yeah. You know, this is Old Miss's Giving Day, but it involves our community in Oxford so heavily. Mm -hmm. And so what a fun way for parents and, and children and everyone else to get involved as well. That's Absolutely. great. That's great. So yeah. what is the most important part of Giving Day for you? So the most important part of Giving Day, I would say, is really delivering the message that every gift matters right. and any gift size matters. Mm -hmm. um, as education majors and graduates, we're not making millions of dollars a year. Right. And that's okay because the purpose and the function of what it means to be an educator is mm -hmm. really reaching out to one student at a time. Yep. And Giving Day really emulates that. Mm -hmm. So we want to celebrate not only $5 gifts, but $5 million yeah. gifts in the same way. And what really excites me about Giving Day this year is I'm seeing a lot of first-time donors. I'm That's seeing great. a lot of students and young alums that are really learning about what funding, the impact of funding makes yes. for their education, and they want to give back, and they want to pay it forward. Right. And Giving Day is just a great way to have that conversation and to really showcase the power of philanthropy. Right, and you mentioned first-time donors, so I feel like an, an audience that sometimes gets forgotten about when we're speaking about donors our current students. Yes. So how can students get involved in Giving Day for the School of Ed? Oh, that's a great question. We have a lot going on for students that can get involved. Okay. Um, the University Development Office is launching, um, or they have launched, an effort for students to join the Flagship Society for right. $24 if they're a graduating senior or yep. graduating graduate student. Mm -hmm. And that's a really great entry point to join the Flagship Society. Mm -hmm. For $24, you get an honor cord. At the School of Ed, we have these really special Special, um, special edition tumblers yeah. that look like Stanley's. Yes, Dean Rock brought one with him yesterday. He, he forgot did. to talk about it, but he had yes. one with him. Yes. yes, and we have a special rate for faculty, staff, and students okay. that if they give a gift of $50 or more, they can get that. Okay. If they're an alumni, friend, parent, it's $75, and okay. we'll send it in the mail. And it's a really great way to show the School of Ed and show your pride for the School yeah. of Ed. And they have been really, really popular, and I really hope we don't run out. They're really nice tumblers. Yes. Like, very, very nice. Yeah. Um, I always, I just have to mention, I love coming over to Guyton. I've had a couple of projects that have required me to be over there in the past couple of weeks. Yeah. And I don't know what it is about the energy of Guyton, but you yeah. walk in, and it's just a happy place. It really is. It's a is. really happy place. <laughs> I, I mentioned to Dean Rock yesterday that I come from a family of education. Yeah. My mom is an elementary school principal, mm -hmm. and I feel the same way walking into Guyton as I do walking into her elementary school. You're oh just gosh. overjoyed <laughs> with like excitement about what is happening. So yes. I, I absolutely love that. What projects are going on at the School of Ed right now? I know we mentioned yesterday the um, playground equipment for Willie Price yes. for the 2K class yes. or two-year-old class. Yes. Um, are there any other projects that you want to talk about and shout out right now? Absolutely. So the two challenges right now, one launched today. Mm -hmm. It's a, um, a secondary challenge for our immediate need fund. Okay. And Dean Rock talked about this yesterday yes. too, but our immediate need fund is 
one of the best examples of philanthropy that I've ever come across in my career, mm -hmm. where we have students that um, perhaps there's a praxis or the foundations of reading tests mm -hmm. that they get to their junior year and mm -hmm. they can't afford to pay the exam fee. Right. And they choose to choose uh, to change their major or drop wow. out or mm -hmm. because it's very expensive, especially mm -hmm. for someone that has limited financial resources. Right. So this fund can help step in and make sure that our students are graduating, becoming educators and mm -hmm. serving Mississippi. Mm -hmm. They also um, can use this fund for gas if mm -hmm. they need to get to their student teaching placement, emergency grocery funds, emergency tuition, emergency books. It mm -hmm. really meets the needs of the students at that moment. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to raise a lot of money and awareness that yeah. not only does this fund exist, but it can help our students immediately. Yeah. Another fund that is really near and dear to my heart is the Student Teaching Fund. Yes. And this, um, I totally copy and stole this idea from another institution. That's totally but fine. Exactly. It's the yeah. case method. Copy and steal everything. Yes. <laughs> and it, um, it, it was a really cool project where it allowed our student teachers to have the basic school supplies that they'll need in their classrooms. That's so right. a three-hole punch, scissors. Yes. Um, I'm really hoping that we can raise enough money to get reams of paper because we're learning that school districts funding is really, really tight and they're cutting access to copy paper Which for is, teachers. It's crazy to hear that because it, I mean, it's a basic need in schools and how exactly. do you have a school day even yeah. with technology in the classroom and whatever it might be without mm -hmm. access to paper. That's insane. Absolutely. And if we can provide that first ream of paper yeah. to get them started, then hopefully we can do that. And mm -hmm. we like to add some fun things too, like a school of ed pennant. Um, yeah. It's really fun in classrooms when teachers can show the students where they went to school right. and it ignites that camp, uh, that it ignites that conversation. Absolutely. Of what college is, why it's important, mm -hmm. and really getting students to dream, even mm -hmm. at the young, young ages of, of fully pricey. Yes, and absolutely. It's just so important, and it's a great, great project. Yeah. And we run that campaign every single year. Mm -hmm. And it's really popular, especially for current parents, because yes. they're able to sponsor their child's kit or grandparents or friends. And, uh -huh. Um, Giving Day allows us to really bridge that gap and to mm -hmm. expand those resources that we provide for student teachers. Yeah, that's something that we've talked about on almost every segment is that this is, Giving Day is impacting the right now. I feel like yeah. oftentimes we donate money and it's going to this like imaginary thing that might yeah. one day exist in the future, but this is really something that's happening right now. It's existing mm -hmm. right now. Exactly. Um, the program you're talking about, it, it just reminds me of my mom, the city she works in, she works in Decatur, Alabama, yeah. um, and their young professionals uh, council there will actually, when, when student teachers come in or when teachers are placed in the community, they will provide them with all of the supplies to stock wow. their classroom. And it reminded me of that and what an incredible initiative because I feel like that's overwhelming for a recent graduate or a yeah. student teacher going into their first placement and first classroom and you have all these dreams and goals of what you want your classroom to be mm -hmm. and you meet a financial barrier that shouldn't be there yes. and so it's incredible that the school that is able to step in yep. and and take that load on for them absolutely that's absolutely. great um what are are there any other initiatives that you want to shout out or mention anything to get people excited about giving day about giving before we sign off oh my gosh well i could i could be here all day all day to, to get people about. excited and going <laughs> yes absolutely we have so many centers of excellence we have so many um individual initiatives mm -hmm. um I, I'll say with the Center of Math and Science Education, because we talked about the planetarium, yes. I know they still have an active challenge going on. Okay. I think they need one or two more gifts to meet that challenge. Okay. Our Mississippi Geographic Alliance also needs a couple more donors to okay. meet that. And that's a really, really cool program where yes. they take, um, they work not only to inspire students to get into geography, but uh -huh. also a lot of professional development opportunities for current teachers. Yeah. And they have these really big maps that they take on the road uh -huh. and allow students to experience geography like in person. And it's, yeah. it's so, so cool. How fun. So those, I would say those challenges, especially those that just need one or two more gifts, right, need right. a little extra love. But right. Um, I could honestly be Go here for and days on, and days about, and days. We've got a web. We've got obviously, if you've been to the Giving Day website, all of the challenges are listed, and I would love to be able to yeah. highlight every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. They're all so important. We could chat. We could talk on this live stream for forever yes. about it. About it. But um, before we sign off. I do want to mention uh, the Chancellor's Grove Wellbeing Initiative. So the Family Leadership Council is challenging you to join them in supporting the Chancellor's Grove Wellbeing Initiative, a campus-wide effort to elevate the practice of meaningful wellness. 
services, resources, and programming across all components of wellness. When 15 gifts are made, an additional $1,000 will be unlocked to enhance these essential campus services. So head on over to givingday.olemiss.edu to give now. Remember, you can give through Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, all major credit cards. Help the school of ed out with some of these challenges they've got going on. And um, we will see you back soon at the top of the hour. Hotty toddy. Hey Rebs, my name is Madeline and today I'm here with Fred Slaybach, the Dean of the Ole Miss Law School. And we're just going to talk about Giving Day and kind of what Giving Day means to the law school. So Fred, can you just tell us a little bit about the law school? Oh, it, I think we're one of the best law schools in the SEC, if not the entire nation. Our, our graduates are in such great demand. Um, we have graduates in New York City, Washington DC, Los Angeles, and just about anywhere in the country, especially right here in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most prestigious jobs that a law graduate can receive is a judicial clerkship. And we have twice the percentage of our graduates that get judicial clerkships than the national average. In fact, we're, on, we're third in the SEC behind only Vanderbilt and the University of Alabama. So oh, wow. it's an amazing law school. Mm -hmm. Our students are just absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And we've got this fabulous alumni base. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Having that alumni base is always good. Um, what are some of the amazing things y'all have been working on this year and next year? Well, one of the things we really want to do is to expand the um, business law fellowship program. Mm -hmm. It's very unique in legal education and we want to expand that. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at the possibility of creating additional scholarships for our students. Uh, we want to improve our bar passage rates and we just want to continue to support our amazing students, faculty, mm -hmm. staff, and alumni. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So how can folks get involved with providing help for this? Well, of course, first, make a gift during Giving Day 2024. Yes, of course. Come on, y'all. And consider uh, cementing your place at the law school by buying one of the bricks in our courtyard. Mm -hmm. And of course, to all of our alums, uh, we hope you'll continue hiring our graduates. Of course. Everyone needs a job. Um, why is giving so important to y'all and what y'all are trying to accomplish? Well, we would not be able to um, be as competitive as we mm -hmm. are um, within the SEC and throughout the nation without um, our donors and, mm -hmm. and the support that they provide us. We are a very cost efficient law school, mm -hmm. um, but it simply wouldn't be possible for us to be as competitive for in-state students as well as out-of-state students if we didn't have the support from our alumni. Yes, sir. 
Um, so where do you see the law school going in the future? Well, <laughs> I think the sky's the limit. <laughs> we, we have just a phenomenal foundation mm -hmm. at the law school, and we, we just want to make sure that all of our students have the opportunity to be able to reach their full potential and become leaders, um, not only in the bench and the bar, but leaders in society mm -hmm. more generally. Um, we, we have this fabulous reputation, and it's, and it's valid, that our graduates are making policy here in the state uh, as well as in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. and around the world. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, and it's so important to make a difference, you know, not only in education, but, you know, in the real world, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so what impact do your donors have on the law school? Well, we have a lot of students that literally would not be able to go to law school mm -hmm. if it weren't for the financial support mm -hmm. that um, our donors provide. We also have extremely competitive uh, trial advocacy teams that go to competitions all over the world. Mm -hmm. And they would not be able to do that if we didn't have the financial support for their travel um, right. and their competition expenses. It's just literally everything we do at the law school mm -hmm. is made possible by our donors. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, can you talk a little bit about the importance of the size of gift versus, you know, the number of gifts? Any gift of any size mm -hmm. um, is extraordinarily important to mm -hmm. us, whether it's a $5 gift or a $5 million mm -hmm. gift, um, it all helps us so much. And it, it is true that on Giving Day, what we're really focused on is the total number of gifts. So we encourage everyone to participate mm -hmm. at whatever level mm -hmm. possible. So did y'all hear that? Everyone can donate. Everyone. Um, and what would you like to say to the people who have already made a gift? Well, we appreciate you more than you can ever know. And we're just extremely grateful for all the support that you give to our amazing students, faculty, and staff. And then is there anything else you would like to add before we go? Um, there is, actually. And because this is Giving Day, I want to let everyone know that we are in a bit of a competition with the School of Education. Oh. Um, and although we love our educators mm -hmm. and teachers, um, last year the School of Education actually had more donors on Giving Day than the law school. And really? so this year we have established a goal of 500 gifts mm -hmm. on Giving Day. So. Everyone, please make your contribution at any level and hotty toddy. Hotty toddy, y'all. They have to beat the School of Ed. So everyone donate um, as much as they can. And thank you so much, Fred, for sitting here with me today. And I hope Giving Day goes well for the law school. Great. Thanks, Mallory. Thank you. Remember, Rebel Nation, it's not the size of the gifts, but the number of gifts that count today. The time is now. Make a gift and help your favorite areas around campus. Gifts can be made through Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, and all major credit cards. To make a gift, visit givingday.olemiss.edu. Help us spread the word once you've given and post about it on social media using the hashtag Ole Miss Giving Day. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please come back for more Giving Day content. Thanks to your generous support, the Ole Miss Business School continues to make a positive impact in tomorrow's world. Thank you for including your gift during Giving Day 2024. Thank you for your gifts in support of 2024 Giving Day for the University Libraries. Your gifts are greatly appreciated by our students and they use them every day that they come in here. On behalf of the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement, thank you. No matter how big or small your gift was throughout Giving Day 2024, we sincerely appreciate you and your generosity Know that your gifts will go to support students, not only today, but for generations to come. Thank you. Hello, I'm Julia Aubrey, director of the Ford Center. Thank you so much for your donations on Giving Day. We're looking forward to having the opportunity to see new spotlights in our theater. And thank you for everything that you do for the arts. Thank you for all of your gifts for our 2024 Giving Day for the Sally McDonald Barstale Honors College. Your gifts will make a difference today and for generations to come. Thanks. Thank you for contributing to the School of Journalism and New Media on Giving Day. Your gift will make a meaningful impact today and beyond. I'm Viola A. Koff, Dean of the School of Engineering. I want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for your gifts for Giving Day 2024. Your gifts and support would go a long way to help our students in our programs. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for your gift on Giving Day 2024. 
The most important thing we do here at the law school is focus on our students. When you give, you help our students succeed. And that success transforms lives. Thank you for all you do for our students. Thank you for supporting the graduate school and investing in our graduate students on Giving Day. We appreciate your continued support now and in the future. I wanna thank you for your gifts to the Division of Outreach during Giving Day 2024. Your continued support helps generations of Mississippians. You help us provide high quality learning experiences that are designed to appeal to a wider variety of Ole Miss students, including working parents, place-bound individuals, and people re-entering college after a significant time away from their studies. Thanks again for helping students from elementary age to college to lifelong learning. Thank you so much for your support of Giving Day 2024 to the College of Liberal Arts. Your support means so much, not only to our faculty and our students, but it allows us to do so many things that uh, we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So thank you very much. Thank you for your gift to the School of Pharmacy during Giving Day 2024. Your gift, along with the gift of others, makes a huge impact for our School of Pharmacy and for the university now and for generations to come. Thank you for your support and hotty toddy. Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Grangy, and I serve as Dean in the School of Applied Sciences. And I just wanted to thank you for the gifts that you're giving during Giving Day 2024. Your generosity is impacting so many of our students, and it will impact students for years to come. Thank you. I want to thank every one of you who have responded to our Giving Day Fund Appeal with deep and sincere gratitude for the difference you're making. Our supporters not only sustain us, they inspire us. And your generosity will notably advance the missions of our acclaimed academic museum and our National Historic Landmark Literary Heritage Site. Thank you so much. We are grateful for your continued support of the Patterson School of Accountancy during Giving Day 2024. Your gifts, along with the generosity of others, combine to make a lasting impact on the lives of Ole Miss students now and for generations to come. Thank you for your support. Hi, my name is David Rock, Dean of the School of Education at the University of Mississippi. I wanna personally thank you for your amazing support. Your gifts on Giving Day 2024 truly make an everlasting impact on education in Mississippi and beyond. Our faculty, staff, and students are tremendously grateful for your commitment to education. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. What is up Ole Miss? And welcome back to a very special Giving Day episode of Walking with Champions. As always, I'm your host, Lucas Sweeney, and today we are joined with Joe Curry, who is a student who has been directly impacted by gifts donated to the University of Mississippi. Joe. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Luke. All right, no problem. All right, first, first question, we're just going to start out. Yeah. Just tell us, what brings you to the University of Mississippi? So I'm originally from uh, Stringer, Mississippi, a very small town in Jasper County. And uh, in my 11th grade year, I had the opportunity to be uh, a student in the summer program for the Lott Leadership Institute. And so that kind of consisted of me coming to take one political science class, or I think two classes at that point, um, and then having a trip to D.C. funded by the university, getting to meet um, you know, politicians who serve our state. Uh, it was a great experience, but that was my first real experience with Ole Miss, uh, and I loved it. From the moment I stepped foot on campus, I knew I wanted to be here as an undergraduate student, and that's what I did. All right, and then how has Giving Day and the Giving Day gifts been able to personally impact you? Oh, man, I mean, you know, as a small town kid growing up in a school with a class full of 53 people, I never really dreamed of, you know, coming to a huge institution like this. Um, and I came to this institution as an accounting student with a full scholarship. Uh, and I was also a part of the Honors College here. And so, you know, all of that really allowed me to enjoy my, you know, educational experience and earn a uh, wonderful degree here at Ole Miss. Uh, is a fraction of the cost, right? And so I was here on a full-time scholarship and that made life so much easier for me and my family. And so I was just really appreciative of the gifts that were you know, donated by our fellow donors and alumnus um, that allowed me to have that educational experience. Wow, that's terrific. And class of 53, huh? Yeah, class that, 53, small class. That is nuts. We started from uh, kindergarten and pre-K all the way up to graduating together. It was, wow. yeah, it was insane. But you know, it's a great way to grow up, I would say. 
Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, what would you say to anyone who's a little bit apprehensive about donating a gift? Like, how would you encourage those people into donating to the university? Sure. I would say, you know, sometimes I understand that as a donor, you might not see where that money is going or you might not be able to personally meet that, you know, that student that your funds are going to, but just know that that is, you know, making such a huge difference for that student here at the university. Just having the opportunity to attend a wonderful institution like this uh, at a fraction of the cost of other schools. And sometimes, you know, students aren't able to afford, you know, food. Students aren't able to afford, you know, going on trips such as the one I went to in D.C. Uh, strictly because of, you know, just lack of financial resources. And so even though you don't get a personal thank you from that student, just know that student does want to thank you. And they might not be able to find you, but they are so appreciative of the money that you've donated to one them and Ole Miss as a whole. Very nice. All right. And then for our last question, just tell us, what are your plans for after graduation? Sure. So currently, I'm a student of uh, the law school. I'm a third year law student. And uh, after graduation, I'll be working in the Northern District of Alabama for the Honorable uh, Coriel Mays in, um, in the Northern District of Alabama, like I said, uh, for so federal district court. Uh, after that one year federal district court clerkship, I'll be working for Bradley A. Rant Bolt Cummings, uh, headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, in the general litigation and construction practice group. Wow, well, congratulations on all of that. That is very impressive. Thank you. Thank well, you before we sign off today, is there anything else you want to tell the people at home? Anything you want to say to the people who have been giving gifts to the university? Yeah, sure. I would just like to extend a personal thank you once again to all the alumnus and donors who give their financial resources to the University of Mississippi uh, and Hottie Toddy, Ole Miss. All right. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure. And to you guys, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all the episodes of Walking with Champions. and. We'll see you guys on the next one. See you next time. Peace. Hello, I'm Nate Drury. I'm a junior exercise science major here at the University of Mississippi School of Applied Sciences. At the School of Applied Sciences, our students are guaranteed real world experience turning their passion for helping others into a lifetime of career opportunities. Through internships, clinical, and practicum experience and service learning built into our curriculum, students have the opportunity to apply what they learn in the classroom to a practical setting. Our students find careers as researchers, social workers, FBI agents, speech pathologists, and hospitality managers, just to name a few. Graduates from the University of Mississippi School of Applied Sciences are improving the health and wellness of individuals and communities across the world. We invite you to support the School of Applied Sciences your gift will impact both current and future students, as well as what's to come for our school, including the upcoming renovation of the South Oxford Center. Make a gift or donate today by visiting the link on your screen below. Hi, I'm the Dean of the School of Engineering, and our Challenge for Giving Day 2024 is in honor of our 125th anniversary. Since we were founded in 1900, I would match up to $1,900 for the first $1,900 that we raised on Given Day 2024. I hope you help us meet this challenge. Thank you for supporting the Patterson School of Accountancy on Giving Day 2024.
Hello, Ole Miss family. Thank you for your enthusiastic response to Giving Day 2024. Your support now creates opportunities that help our university and our students continue to grow and thrive. Your support now strengthens the people, experiences, and groundbreaking work that make this place so extraordinary. On Giving Day, you can make a powerful impact on Ole Miss. If you haven't given yet, now is the time to combine your gift with others. With your support, we can make an impact on communities in our state and the world. Thank you again, and Howdy toddy. The 100,000 square foot South Campus Rec Center at Ole Miss is home to North Mississippi's only indoor climbing wall. And it's just one of the wellness options available for our entire University of Mississippi community. Students, faculty, and staff enjoy a ropes course, fitness classes in space, workout equipment, basketball courts, a demonstration kitchen, and so much more. Your support on Giving Day to the Rec Center will help students focus on adopting lifelong, strong physical health habits. The Student Media Center gives Ole Miss journalism and new media students the opportunity to gain extraordinary hands-on experience by working on the Ole Miss Yearbook, the Daily Mississippian Campus Newspaper, Rebel Radio, a commercially licensed college radio station, and Newswatch, the only student-produced daily live newscast in the state. Our talented students captured over 85 state, regional, and national awards in 2022 and 2023. Your contribution to the School of Journalism and New Media on Giving Day will support these students in their career preparation.
Hello, Ole Miss family. Thank you for your enthusiastic response to Giving Day 2024. Your support now creates opportunities that help our university and our students continue to grow and thrive. Your support now strengthens the people, experiences, and groundbreaking work that make this place so extraordinary. On Giving Day, you can make a powerful impact on Ole Miss. If you haven't given yet, now is the time to combine your gift with others. With your support, we can make an impact on communities in our state and the world. Thank you again, and... Howdy, howdy.
Legacy isn't just about where you're from, it's about where you're going. So where are you going? I'm going to Ole Miss. I'm going to make a difference. Just like my granddad. I'm going to make the bestseller list. And I'm going to help him get there. I'm going to win a championship. Again! I'm going to break the world record. I'm going to take the next step. I'm going to give back to my community. And our alma mater. I am the first in my family to graduate. Ole Miss. Build your legacy. Our time at Ole Miss has been so rewarding thanks to the opportunities we've had bonding and learning with each other. The Division of Diversity and Community Engagement supports numerous events, student organization, and leadership development activities that bring students together for fun, fellowship, learning, and making a difference. We are excited to ask you to join us in the spirit of philanthropy and give back to the university that has given us so much. We want to raise awareness and support for DCE's Inclusive Excellent Student Support Fund. And the network of organizations and programs in the Center for Inclusion and Cross-Cultural Engagement that help us grow, network, and thrive. All university students can tap into DCE's programs for a one-time experience. But many of us also find meaningful friendships and opportunities for growth, community, and mentorship that last far in the future. We believe the best outcomes are reached through a collaborative spirit and effort, and we hope you'll join us in our mission. We're helping DC create a more inclusive community, remove barriers, and create more access and opportunity for all Ole Miss students. Our DCE groups like the BSU, Most Mentors, Pride Network, Bonner Scholars, Men of Excellence, and many more need and deserve your support. Please share our message with others to spread the word, and if you're able, hit that give button today and help us reach our goal this giving day. Howdy toddy! Way down south in Mississippi, there's a spot that ever calls. Where among the hills enfolded stand all alma mater's halls. Where the trees lift high their branches to the whispering southern breeze. There Ole Miss is calling, calling to our hearts, fun noise. With united hearts we praise thee, all our loyalty is thine. And we hail thee, Alma Mata, may thy light forever shine. May it brighter grow and brighter, and with deep affection true. Our thoughts shall ever cluster round thee, dear old red and blue. May thy fame throughout the nation through thy sons and daughters grow. May thy name forever waken in our hearts a tender glow. May thy counsel and thy spirit ever keep us one in this that our own shall be thine honor now and ever, dear old Miss. The 100,000 square foot South Campus Rec Center at Ole Miss is home to North Mississippi's only indoor climbing wall. And it's just one of the wellness options available for our entire University of Mississippi community. Students, faculty, and staff enjoy a ropes course, fitness classes and space, workout equipment, basketball courts, a demonstration kitchen, and so much more. Your support on Giving Day to the Rec Center will help students focus on adopting lifelong, strong physical health habits. Center gives Ole Miss journalism and new media students the opportunity to gain extraordinary hands-on experience by working on the Ole Miss yearbook, the Daily Mississippian campus newspaper, 
Rebel Radio, a commercially licensed college radio station, and Newswatch, the only student-produced daily live newscast in the state. Our talented students captured over 85 state, regional, and national awards in 2022 and 2023. Your contribution to the School of Journalism and New Media on Giving Day will support these students in their career preparation.
Dear Ole Miss family, my name is Samantha Seb. Daniel Connor. Joe Curry. Piper Lind. But you can call me Sam. I chose to attend the University of Mississippi because when I visited Oxford while attending my admitted student tour, it immediately felt like home. I always felt welcomed and celebrated. I'm originally from Australia, Mississippi. And when I first chose the University of Mississippi back in 2012, I was 18 years old. Ole Miss lifted me and provided me with the tools and resources to build my confidence and make a difference in the world around me. I completed an accounting degree, and actually, I was a Hall of Fame graduate. This year, my fellow students elected me as Miss Ole Miss. My education would not be possible without the support of the donors who have established a scholarship in their name. I've been able to focus solely on my education, my research, and my personal and career development. I was recently elected Mr. Ole Miss, and this would not have been possible without the support, guidance, and mentorship of individuals within the Honors College, Lot Leadership Institute, and the Ole Miss Women's Council. The majority of my educational experiences were covered through donor funding, and I'm extremely appreciative of those individuals who have helped me achieve my educational goals. Today is Giving Day. Giving Day is for everyone, not just major donors. If you're a donor, your funding and support allows students like me to take advantage of every educational opportunity at Ole Miss without the burden of having to worry about paying for our education. There are so many important programs to support today. In many ways, you can show your love for Ole Miss. From a $10 gift to a million dollar gift, Giving Day is for everyone who cares about the University of Mississippi. If you're already a donor, I hope you continue to give generously to what you love about Ole Miss. If you've never given back to the university before, today is the perfect day to start. Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream. If you're just now tuning in, we are streaming live from the Student Union for the university's fifth annual Giving Day. For the past day and a half, we have been raising critical support for 23 departments across our campus. And if you haven't had a chance to give yet, it's not too late. If you can't decide between your favorite degree program, an important scholarship fund, the arts, student services, and more, you can do what so many others choose to do on Giving Day and make a gift to multiple causes. Every gift of any size matters to the future of this university, so go on over to givingday.olemiss.edu to give now. At last check, we have raised over $6 million with more than 2,000 gifts. Now that number is going up by the second, and we're going to keep that momentum going, and we're going to welcome a musical act, Miss G1 Lee.
Woohoo! Hey, G1. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. That was beautiful. Hi. Thank you. How are you? How's your giving day going? Amazing. Amazing. Having so much fun. Good. Okay, so you're a GA over at Development, um, and you're in the IMC graduate program. Is yeah, that correct? That's, okay. That's right. What is your favorite part about working over at the Development office? I think the coolest part about that all is that I get to like kind of connect with different people every single day. So mm -hmm. like not every day is the same. And um, I get to see, you know, what really goes behind the scenes a lot. Mm -hmm. So like obviously when I was a student and when I'm still a student, I guess, but um, when I was an undergrad student, you know, I would get scholarships to go to school and stuff like that. And, you know, I, you know, saw those names of like academic excellence scholarship or something endowment scholarship and these and that, but I never got to see like what goes into that, right? So right. working in development really helps me um, kind of understand what all goes into it. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, from the moment that we meet, you know, a donor, you know, or, you know, talking about a gift, like mm -hmm. I get to see every step of the way. And, mm -hmm. you know, making those connections and relationship has really been such a valuable time, you mm -hmm. know, and really kind of like makes it more special because right. I like to tell people like, why do you like development? Why do you like fundraising so much? Like, you know, not a lot of people like, you know, say I love to fundraise or I love mm -hmm. to, you know, see that happen. But like, mm -hmm. to me, it's so cool because, you know, my parents went to school here and stuff like that on scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I know how hard it would have been for me to go to school here if it wasn't for a scholarship. Right. And like, it's so cheesy with, to even say this. Mm -hmm. And it's so like, like, cheesy and cringy honestly in some sort but like I love you know that I get to be in the position where I'm kind of giving back to the university yeah, in some absolutely. sort um you know university has given so much opportunity and so much you know scholarship money and anything mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. like I wouldn't be who I am without our university yeah. you know providing for me and I get to be in the other side of that and mm -hmm. like kind of getting to see and help other students, you know, have that opportunity and mm -hmm. kind of give back to the community and university. I think it's wonderful. I think it's the coolest thing. It's so like wholesome, I guess, to yeah. me. Um, it's some like positive say, all the yeah, time. Yeah, like it's so, it's so fun and it's so exciting to me, like mm -hmm. just to see how it all works yeah. and seeing people like, you know, I might know them from growing up and things, but like mm -hmm. now I have a deeper, you know, relationship with these, yeah. you know, people and, you know, whether I'm like on campus, you know, just going to class or I'm playing the national anthem, you know, on baseball field, like mm -hmm. I get to meet all these people all the time. Oops, mm -hmm. I'm like hitting things. Um, but like seeing these people on different aspect is so cool to me. Uh -huh. And like, it's like a bonding moment. I it love is. it. I love it so much. It is. I, you know, I did undergrad and grad school here as well. And when you take on like a working role at this university and something that's a little bit behind the scenes, you gain a whole new appreciation for it for and sure. the for process sure. to make what seems easy to everybody else, but to make all of this happen, you really, it's, it's, it makes you appreciative of it all. Oh, for sure. And you know, I grew up in Oxford, so mm -hmm. it's even like deeper for me because I yeah. grew up as like a little kid running around Lyceum and running around, you know, the Grove, like literally with my parents. And, you know, now I'm in the position where I'm providing, you know, opportunities for little kids like, you know, who yeah. like I was, right. you know, to have these opportunities, like, you know, run around, you know, with, you know, grad student, you know, housing and mm -hmm. grad students, you know, their um, family activities and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of helping them like kind of plan these things out. I'm kind of like putting in that, you know, thinking cap on, I guess, yeah. some sort of like, what can I do? What would I have liked? Or uh -huh. what would have my parents, you know, appreciated and yeah. stuff like that. So it's like really cool. It's like a full circle moment. It of is, some sort. yeah. Very much. So you were in the part of the South. Yeah. I was Rebelette. I, I talked to Nancy Mariah yesterday. We mentioned the new band practice facility. I'm so happy for them. And like this much jealous. Oh, for like sure. Like this much jealous. Oh, so much. Yes. It is. I said that, you know, I think us having to practice on the field we were on was like a humbling experience. Oh, for sure. Um, I mean, do you remember how bad it was? Like the band camp? I'm sorry. The bugs, the sun, the sun Oh my gosh. Yes. I remember. Just endless hours. Thing. Not only being in the heat, but also like on that grass. And it yeah, was when just, it rains, when like, it rains, the day like today, yeah, it would like you be, can practice, yeah, like, like we have to, yeah, there was yeah, no way. I would have to tell people like wear your bad shoes because yes. like your shoes will get ruined. Your shoes will get ruined. But like we weren't allowed to like march in sandals, obviously, right, or barefoot, right. So yeah. like just wear your bad shoes. Yeah, like, I remember. It's, I mean, I'm again, 
It's incredible. Obviously, so happy for them, and what an accomplishment. I mean, that was getting a new practice facility was something I remember them talking about when we were freshmen. Oh, yeah, I remember. And it, I mean, to be transparent, at times it felt like this is never going to happen. No one's yeah. going to take this seriously, and because of the work with the development office and Dr. Wilson and everyone else who really rallied behind it, they right. were able to put it together. Right. I mean, I remember seeing the plan for the practice field for the first time. Uh -huh. Mr. Wilson pulled me in to the office and said, hey, look at this. Like, uh -huh. this can be done. Yeah. We don't know when, hopefully soon, before right. you graduate, let's just say, but like, this can be done. Yes. Look at this. And I remember thinking, He was like, always so is... optimistic about, he was realistic in like what it would take, but he was always so optimistic in the fact that like one day we will get there. Right. Yeah. And like, you know, his whole thing of like, you know, enjoy the moment. You yes. remember those speeches? Oh my. Like so Friday I was night speeches? Ask, I meant to ask, so there's a new director of bands now, and I didn't know if he had the same tradition as on Friday afternoons, getting the ladder out, I think going it's similar. on. similar. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's not like the bring, the, it bring a poncho. The same. It's bring not. A poncho. Yep. I, I will mm -hmm. just say, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a Wilson kid. I'm yes. Still. Um, honestly, would have not even came to Ole Miss if it wasn't Mr. Wilson coming to my high school every Friday, was it? Yeah. Saying, like, hey, you should come to Ole Miss. Like, play that's in the awesome. band. Yeah, yeah, that's how it all started, like, 10 years ago. Right? That's it's great. So long time ago. Wow. Um, but, yeah, Friday night speeches are still kind of there. Uh -huh. It's not as, you know, um, like like warm fuzzy feeling these broad like, life yeah. lessons that you never thought you'd get on a band yeah, field at five o'clock in the evening on friday like, look in your left look, look to your, your right. right yes look who's around you and yes. like enjoy the moment because mm -hmm. i never have and, and we would be just, just pouring in sweat i know but better believe we were locked in i know and we, we were, were appreciating everything he had to and say. he was funny he oh my god he gosh. would call on you like he would two seconds yes like, absolutely you had to focus. yeah you had to be i remember so good times aside from being a ga you know like I said, you were in the band in undergrad. Did you get an undergrad, a bachelor's in IMC, or is that, are you just getting that master's degree? So IMC is like a brand new thing to me. Okay. So I got my bachelor's in music performance. Okay. So in flute and violin performance, did okay. that. And then I went straight into a master's um, and got violin flute performance with a music education wow. on top of it. Okay. Yeah, I was crazy. I don't know how I did that. So now you're getting a second master's. Yeah, and then I, well, I went and taught for a whole year, actually, okay. in the public school. I was a, okay. I was I a Miss Lee for, for a year. Oh, my okay. gosh. I can't believe that happened. Uh -huh. um, great time. Uh -huh. Amazing. Loved it. Yeah. But there was something that I was missing. Right. Like, I missed the whole people thing. Yes. Like, you know, I love teaching. My mm -hmm. parents are teachers. I love it. I've grown up with it and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. I just miss, like, seeing, like, what people are doing out there. You yes. know, like, and then I was thinking, like, I love sports. I love, you know, like, media things. And mm -hmm. I love public relations stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like, so I feel like IMC would be a good choice. Yeah. So before I get older, I felt like, uh -huh. I was like, I'm going to go back to school and get my IMC degree. And yeah. here we are, two years awesome. later. I'm about to graduate. What do you, oh, congratulations. Didn't realize you are finished May. Congrats. <laughs> Um, what do you like most about the IMC grad program? I think it's the fact that we are, I love the fact that our professors are coming from the actual industries. Yes. So like we have a really good mixture of like, um, you know, industry professionals and the researchers. Right. So like people coming from academics, but also people who come from like real world things. Who have worked yeah, in the field like, literally. and are just now deciding yeah, to teach. Yeah, like my yes. professor used to be, you know, the PR person and stuff for Chick-fil-A, let's just say. Right. Or like they used to run campaigns for like, you know, Tylenol, let's yes. just say. Like, isn't yep. that amazing? Like, yes, incredible. we have incredible lineup of professors here yep. at Ole Miss that I just didn't know what I was expecting going in, mm -hmm. um, but being in these courses and like campaigns and stuff like that, like like two weeks ago, we uh -huh. ran an IMC Connect campaign, uh -huh. um, three day conference, literally student led um, yes. event. We yes. invited like 25 industry people, like VPs of these name companies, right? Like we got to do all these stuff. Yes. Like we got to network with them uh -huh. and like no other universities really do that no. around us. Yeah. And it was incredible. We had so yes. much fun. Um, I learned so much mm -hmm. and we got so many like times with the speakers and you know our students and stuff like that mm -hmm. where honestly like I wish I was here another year almost just yeah. so I can like do that again just like it was so much it. fun um and you know next week we're doing another campaign called mm -hmm. National Week of Conversation okay and like we're doing the same thing like uh -huh. we're hosting events and we're connecting with these you know you know, official people, like nonprofit yeah. organizations. Yes. Um, and it's just incredible. Like, yes. I think it's so neat. Uh -huh. um, the curriculum is 
still growing. Yes, and, it is. Um, That's the thing. It's it's a, it's still a relatively new program. Right. It's like 12 years old. Yes. I think. It's not. Right. I mean, it hasn't been around that long. And Dean Hickerson coming in has really helped in revitalizing and ensuring that each facet of the School of Journalism New Media and the graduate students are able to utilize all of the resources at right. their disposal. Right. And she has I done agree. an excellent job right. of and, that. And the cooler part is like, she knows all our names. Like yes. we go into yes. the building and all the professors know yep. every one of our names. Yep. And if not, they know which class you're taking and stuff. Right. So like there's that one-on-one -on -one connection that you can get mm -hmm. from the school and from the professors, which right. again, from other, you know, places mm -hmm. might not get you know right I mean that's something that Ole Miss is so special about I think because mm -hmm. like our professors and faculty and staff like put some time to like get to know you yes and I love that so much yes um my friends from other universities they say yeah our you know professors don't really know our names like I don't know them like yeah I'm not going in there like why would I do that I'm no. like oh my gosh well me over here like I'm literally going yes. to last see him we'll like, go have coffee yeah. and we'll chat or and yeah like yes. professors always are like okay how are you doing like mental right. health check like how are we doing right um what can I do to help you I love that yes so much yeah it's amazing Same. I, and it's it's fun from you know my perspective coming from doing undergrad master's and now working at the university it's always funny when I go into meetings in like an official capacity and there's a former professor in there and they're like hey I know you yeah, you know literally. we've been here before yeah. together yeah. yeah it's the small campus feel really you can feel that through the academics right. and how well we're able to connect with professors and other students and and that kind of thing yeah. I love it so much Me I too. love it here I do too. I never want to leave never want to leave never on that leave. note so you are graduating in May yeah one I'm sure you've gotten this question 500,000 times what are your plans after graduation well like I said just now, I want to stay at Ole Miss okay. and hopefully work in some department in okay. some capacity. Yep. Um, there are a few, you know, fields that I'm interested in more than the other, of mm -hmm. course. Um, and I know my capability and my weakness, I guess, right. really. Yeah. So I guess kind of like balancing that out a little bit, yeah. seeing like what I can do well, but then what I can like challenge myself to do better. Yep. I'm looking for a job like that. So if anybody's hiring, Anyone, let me know. Um, Anyone Dean's hiring? Department Anyone heads. Hiring? Um, she's, let she's me looking. know. I, yeah. I'm, I'm available. officially available. Yes. Please let me know. Yes, um, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we're looking for a job. Um, okay. I might have an internship in the summer, but okay. um, you know, that's a short term. So right. I'm looking for a long term also. Right. So let me know. Well, Anybody again, an, like we just keep saying this, how wonderful it is at this university that there are so many connections. I mean, the reason I'm sitting here hosting this today is because I was an IMC student undergrad. I took a graphic design class with Dennis Irwin, um, someone came in to talk about the, uh, my boss is standing over there, he's waiting until <laughs> I'm gonna mention his name. Someone came in to talk about the Social Media Ambassador Program. I applied, did not get accepted the first time, applied again the next semester. Webb and I started, my boss and I started, I started as an intern, he started in his role as digital content specialist about a week apart. Um, and now- It's a dream team. Yeah, tell me about it. Literally. Tell me about it. So. I went to grad school. I was an SMA for three years, went to grad school, was a GA at Marcom, got offered a full-time position, and now I'm here. And this all started my junior year of college because and of a class. And you were a rebel on top of that. How did you do all that? That's a lot. You know, sometimes I go back and I look at my planners. Like, I found an old planner the other day, and I was Same. like, I might have been insane. Yeah. But actually, I did it, though. and that's yeah. okay. We yeah. made it through. Four to six every day. Every day. We were out there. Yes. <laughs> every day. Plus weekends games everything yeah. but I wouldn't trade it for anything no you know? absolutely like, not such a great like time. I always say my college experience I think was unique in that for sure I did that for four full years right but I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for anything right what do you think is your favorite memory from your time as a student grad student whatever whatever it might be oh gosh this is a big it's, question it is. I've been here for a minute you have let's let's go let's let's categorize it let's go favorite memory from undergrad um undergrad okay I'm not trying to go so like athletics but like okay. you know my freshman year and sophomore year 2014 and 2015 uh -huh. we beat we we beat Bama we did mm -hmm. and I was there for both times yes I might have been a band you know so I didn't get to do the full experience thing but, you but I was there. in there I was yes. in the middle of in the middle of it all right yeah I was in the middle of it all so that was pretty cool yeah um probably missing you know a lot but I don't know. I've done so much, you know, over the years. It like, all kind of, it feels like it meshes together. I know. I'm like, what all did I do? Yes. And like, what about grad school? What do you think have been your favorite moments 
in the past two years in this IMC grad program? I think, honestly, being an IMC, I guess, like, a few different things, but, like, working for development yes. kind of got me a whole new, appreci like, you know, appreciation mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. this university and a whole different level. Mm -hmm. So that's been incredible. Um, and running this IMC Connect event, like, yeah. I'm still, it's, like, been two three weeks now and mm -hmm. I'm still like thinking about it and I'm, mm -hmm. it's still in my brain you know like yes. I've been planning this for literally months and you know we are just finished but yes. like we're starting to kind of like figure out what we can do better next year and right. stuff so like it's never really leaving it's like no. living in my head rent free honestly yes absolutely um, so I love that and yeah. obviously I'm now looking forward to graduation and yes a pretty nice you know nice weather commencement is all I'm hoping for let's yes. just let's just absolutely. say absolutely Everyone pray, no rain. Yeah, well, let's, thing. morning yeah. convocation in the grove. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's, that's yeah. Last time I graduated in 2021, our convocation it was, was at the stadium. Actually, was it? Yeah, I can't remember. Okay, it, yeah, it that was, was that it was, was different. The stadium. Yes, I didn't. I didn't hate it. Though. That was po yes, because that was post COVID time. Yeah, yeah. So I, everybody mm -hmm. had to be spread out. I guess. Yes, yeah. but it was fun. It, it was, was. It was a cool experience. It was to a take cool your experience. Family into the stadium yeah. experience. So that was you know. that was neat. Yeah. Um, but hopefully this time it'll be in the Grove again. We'll you can't see. beat morning convocation. Though. Yeah, it's, it it's a thing. Beautiful. It's just something about it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So switching back really quick to Giving Day, are there any challenges that you're um, specifically excited about, you want to shout out, um, anything you want to say about Giving Day? Yeah, so um, I have been kind of like involved in three different areas this mm -hmm. Giving Day. Um, so currently I'm the president of the band alumni. Okay. Club, so anything if you want to give it to band please shout out to band mm -hmm. um give it to band you know they have the most students out of the whole campus organizations yeah they have 300 plus kids mm -hmm. um we would love for their scholarship um i wouldn't you know been able to go to school without band right. scholarship so you know please go give for the scholarship yes and then of course you know my, my love and my heart the journalism you mm -hmm. know and new media so mm -hmm. gift to school of journalism and new media mm -hmm. we love and then um something that i'm pushing right now is that i believe it's the chancellor boys challenge right now okay. right and i'm the president of the graduate student council yes and dean clug at the graduate school um kind of told us that if we win this challenge mm -hmm. between noon and two uh -huh. then that prize money comes to the graduate student council account yes. so that means that with that money we can do something fun with the whole graduate students yes i say that's a pretty pretty good deal yes absolutely yeah. if you get five dollars like if you give like five dollars which is like i mean that's not, a coffee yeah it's if that it's less than a coffee yeah it's less than what you get anywhere right right like five dollars is not the biggest thing right right girl girl math for a second girl, girl math, math yeah five dollars it's kind of nothing it's nothing it's fine. um so go gift to yes. the graduate school you know for chancellor boys challenge yes. so we can go have fun graduate students need it Listen, they do like we're having you deserve struggle. a break like we are on thin you know yes. stretch that last of month life. right yeah we're dying probably yep um i'm here but i'm not really here right you know it's like my brain's You're like everywhere there. yeah we're getting there yeah like one month we'll be done but yep. that month is gonna be the longest you know, exactly month. one month from tomorrow is it really? It's graduation. Oh, you're right. Oh, don't remind me. That's kind of crazy. <sighs> Literally. And sad. And exciting. It's all the emotions. Yeah, all You'll the feel emotions. it all. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, give it to graduate school. Yes. Like right now. Uh, we're trying to win this thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Juwan. Yeah, this has been so me. fun. Um, be sure to tune back in at the next hour. I think that we will have a big announcement coming up soon. Um, numbers like i said our numbers keep going up gifts keep going up so we are so excited let's keep the momentum going and we will see you back at the top of the hour hotty toddy hotty toddy hey rebs welcome back to the giving day interviews today i'm here with wawis from the university counseling center and today we're just going to talk about what giving day means to them so can you tell us a little bit about the University Counseling Center? Yes, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to share that we have 34 staff members at the UCC right now serving our students here at Ole Miss in every way possible through really excellent mental health counseling services. We have 13 licensed clinicians, uh, 11 graduate students from counselor ed, clinical psych and social work working mm -hmm. with us as well. 
three psychiatric nurse practitioners and a psychiatrist, in addition to some admin support staff wow. and IT staff. <laughs> you all have it trying all. To, trying <laughs> to meet needs and hoping to continue to grow next year to continue to meet student needs mm -hmm. toward wellness. And mm -hmm. that's what we're all here for, mm -hmm. is, so, is to help support every student toward graduation right. and provide tools and resources mm -hmm. that, that every student here mm -hmm. needs, that all humans need, I mm -hmm. guess. Yes, and mental health is so important, and it's something that I don't think a lot of people realize. that It's just as important as your physical health, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so what, it, what are some things y'all are working on in the counseling center right now? Well, right now we're part of the larger Chancellor's uh, Wellbeing Initiative, mm -hmm. the Grove Wellbeing Initiative that's encompassing all areas of wellness from counseling to University Health Services to William McGee Center for Alcohol and Other Drugs. Mm -hmm. We're trying to bring programming all together under that larger wellness umbrella mm -hmm. as far as our outreach services and things like that. Mm -hmm. For instance, we've got several events coming up uh, that we're doing in partnership mm -hmm. with other entities on campus to mm -hmm. promote the me biggest message of hoping that students feel that they matter, they belong. Right having that sense of being in community mm -hmm. no matter who you are or where you are on mm -hmm. campus. Everyone is welcome. When mm -hmm. I came to work here, the motto was everybody speaks. And I've oh, tried okay. to maintain that. Walking mm -hmm. here and seeing people in the union, mm -hmm. particularly parents and students on a day like today, mm -hmm. saying welcome to Ole Miss, hotty toddy, yes, we're so glad you're here. You know, so yeah. it's it's a very exciting time to be a staff member at Ole Miss, a counselor at Ole Miss, and certainly a student at Ole Miss right mm -hmm. now. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so why is give or how can people get involved um, with the university counseling program? How can they help out? We do a variety of different kinds of things where people can get involved and help. We provide mental health first aid mm -hmm. training for all campus partners for free mm -hmm. so that if someone comes to you and they're upset, troubled, you know how to get them to the next yeah. resource available. We're doing that. Having support for a program like that mm -hmm. would, be ve would be very beneficial for us mm -hmm. to be able to continue that level of support so that we make sure students have those important relationships mm -hmm. on campus and know how to offer help in a listening ear and heart right. for their classmates or for fe fellow staff mm -hmm. members even on our campus and in our community. Once again, driving toward that sense of community mm -hmm. and giving toward something like that, whether it's toward me being able to have more counselors on staff to continue to meet our growing student needs or you know, providing more outreach programming, bringing speakers to campus. For instance, we have a speaker coming next month mm -hmm. to speak on her own mental health journey, a graduate of the University of Mississippi. Oh, that's exciting. And a Fulbright Scholar, and she's mm -hmm. gonna, gonna come and be a lunchtime speaker here in the Union. We're hoping to get a lot of support mm -hmm. for that. So we're continually looking at ways to get support to right. spread our message in addition to Having pro hiring professionals in mm -hmm. to continue to provide high quality ethical services with integrity. Wow. Yeah. So there are a lot of ways people oh, can get yeah, involved. Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> you all have a lot going mm -hmm. on. That's We're exciting. really excited. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a big semester mm -hmm. for y'all. It is. <laughs> so why is Giving Day so important to y'all? Giving Day is important in that we get to once again speak to what our message and mission is at the mm -hmm. Counseling Center is to promote optimal, optimal mental health and wellness for our students and well-being mm -hmm. and caring for them in ways that only counselors can and partnering with our students, providing them with tools and mm -hmm. resources uh, because many of our students have never had mental health services until right. they come to college and probably have the highest level of services they'll have until they graduate yeah. and maybe even for a while after that. So we realize we're in this wonderful moment where we can provide a lot of tools and resources mm -hmm. for students to utilize to take care of themselves mm -hmm. and to develop very meaningful and supportive relationships, right. healthy relationships. We promote that with mm -hmm. counseling services as well, whether mm -hmm. it's with a, a romantic partner, significant <laughs> other, your best friend, your parents, your brother, your sister, anybody. Mm -hmm. um, we, we try to support that as well because you're as healthy as your relationships. Right. No, so. that's exactly. Yeah. I can safely say I've been to the counseling center for the past year and a half and it has been the best decision I have ever made. So oh, that's thank so you. wonderful to hear. Thank you <laughs> yes, so much. I'm so grateful to hear that. Oh. That means that means a lot to me. I've been a counselor oh. a long, long time and when I hear people say they feel they've mm -hmm. been helped and that it's had meaning for them mm -hmm. and helped them to 
walk that path mm -hmm. with their counselor that just it just means so much no it really y'all yeah. have helped me in many ways thank so you. thank you it's the best place I've ever been so <laughs> no me too yeah. and <laughs> I really love being there and really believe in the work that we do mm -hmm. and would love for anybody who wants to give to come right. come and sit with me and have a cup of coffee and I'll <laughs> show you the counseling center and introduce you to my staff and have them talk to you too about their passion mm -hmm. for this work of helping people mm -hmm. so. so where do you see the counseling center in the next few years in the next few years our, our ultimate goal and dream would be I don't know in the next few years but in years to come is to have a large facility that houses counseling mm -hmm. health services and alcohol and drug wellness services mm -hmm. and, and health promotions all together in one campus unit so that we can continue to be work more collaboratively right. with integrated, more integrated services. Mm -hmm. That's the direction we want to take. Mm -hmm. And already we're all, all good campus partners, but we'd love to be more it, it physically closer to right. each other. But that's, that's a very long-term <laughs> uh, goal for that. But that's the direction we're going mm -hmm. in, is to continue to normalize seeking mental health services, right. to reduce stigma, and to help students know to a person mm -hmm. that they're important. Right. That we're all here to see you mm -hmm. get your diploma. Right. We may not all fit in the picture with you <laughs> and your, your family or whoever shows up for graduation, but we are all going to be right there for you. It takes mm -hmm. all of us from the people that are, you know, plant our flowers mm -hmm. and to the people that teach our classes and people like me. It takes everybody here to help you get right. that diploma, to support you right. as you as you move toward that no, and exactly. help you feel empowered to do exactly. that. Exactly, and it's so important for everyone to feel mm -hmm. that they have support. Yeah. Um, so what impact do the donors have on the Counseling Center? Donors have had a significant impact for us uh, from providing money for renovations in our building to helping fund staff positions. Right now we've had through a very generous donor embedded counseling positions funded at the Veterans and Military Services. We have a counselor there now to see students there, someone at the William McGee Center and someone at the Graduate School. And so we're, we're very lucky in that we've, that's been a, mm -hmm. a function of giving for <laughs> us. It's very meaningful and very exciting. Um, so that's, that's a huge thing yes, for, for donors. And then we've also had donors fund specific programming for us for suicide prevention, mm -hmm. alcohol and other drug prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been we've been very very fortunate in that. No, and that's so nice mm -hmm. to have the campus support to you know mm -hmm. the other you know departments on campus. Yeah. Um, so can you talk about the important importance of size of gift versus number of gifts? Oh gosh, uh, I think any gift is meaningful, mm -hmm. regardless if if we have a ten dollar gift or a ten million dollar gift. Mm -hmm. um, Shoot, I probably wouldn't know how to act if we got a $10 million <laughs> gift, but, <laughs> but at the same time, every gift is important because every gift is a building block, right. whether it's 10 cents to 10 million or 100 right. million. It, it moves us toward these goals of continuing to support wellness mm -hmm. and success for our students because all of us are here for mm -hmm. y'all. That's why I'm here, mm -hmm. it is to help you move through your program right. in the best ways that I can mm -hmm. if you need me. Mm -hmm. And so a gift, any gift, any size, any number of gifts moves us toward those goals. Right. So we're always so grateful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's awesome. That's so exciting yeah. and important. Yeah. <laughs> we're um. always so grateful for everything, you know, yes, and just have been so fortunate to have the levels of support we've had from donors mm -hmm. and that we hope to have in the future and then the support we have from our vice chancellors right. and from from the chancellor himself you know mm -hmm. and, and other community partners as mm -hmm. well right so is there anything you would like to say to the people who have already donated just thank you so much I speak for a whole crew at Lester Hall right now saying thank you we are so grateful for everything you do for us every single day I think about the donors that I've had the wonderful opportunity and privilege to meet personally and, and think about how grateful I am for every single gift you've given us because you're promoting, promoting professional development, staffing, paint, you know, those kinds of things. It's all so important. So thank you very much because in the end, we're supporting better well-being and better mental health for all of our students. And that's a lifelong gift that you're, that you're giving in your gift to the UCC.
Well, on behalf of my students, thank you for oh, everything. Thank you. <laughs> You're the sweetest thing. Oh, thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> um, is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap up? No, thank you. This has been wonderful. <laughs> Y'all have made it such a wonderful and happy experience for me. And so thank you. I really am grateful for for all of y'all, everybody can't see y'all, but all of y'all that are helping, helping with this, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's been so nice to be able to talk to you and get yeah. to know a little more about the Counseling yeah, Center and what y'all do and the programs y'all offer. Um, Giving Day is so important to us. And thank you, Revs, for watching, and we hope to see you on the next interview. Thanks so much. Remember, Rebel Nation, it's not the size of the gifts, but the number of gifts that count today. The time is now. Make a gift and help your favorite areas around campus. Gifts can be made through Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, and all major credit cards. To make a gift, visit givingday.olemiss.edu. Help us spread the word once you've given and post about it on social media using the hashtag Ole Miss Giving Day. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please come back for more Giving Day content. I'm Viola Acoff, Dean of the School of Engineering. I want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for your gifts for Giving Day 2024. Your gifts and support would go a long way to help our students in our programs. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for your gifts and support of 2024 Giving Day for the University Libraries. Your gifts are greatly appreciated by our students and they use them every day that they come in here. Thank you so much for your support of Giving Day 2024 to the College of Liberal Arts. Your support means so much, not only to our faculty and our students, but it, it allows us to do so many things that uh, we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So thank you very much. Hi, my name is David Rock, Dean of the School of Education at the University of Mississippi. I wanna personally thank you for your amazing support. Your gifts on Giving Day 2024 truly make an everlasting impact on education in Mississippi and beyond. Our faculty, staff, and students are tremendously grateful for your commitment to education. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. A is for Are You Kidding? B is for By Golly? C, D is for Crazy Deals? Because E, everybody is talking about F, Flagship Chords. This jaw-dropping weaved rope will have all of your peers seething with jealousy as the premium tassels blow so eloquently in the wind. Not only will you be the most stylish graduate on stage, but this reward also includes a bonus of becoming an inducted member into the University of Mississippi's flagship society. If you call or send in an email right now, you can get all of this for the low, low donation of $23.99, and for no additional charge, you get to direct your hard-earned funds to your department of choice. Had a professor you loved? Send the donation to their department. Had a professor you loved? Not as much as send a donation to their arch enemies department. There is no wrong way to give back to your community. At the University of Mississippi School of Pharmacy, we believe in the power of education to transform lives and shape the future of healthcare. Our commitment to excellence has consistently earned us a spot among the top 25 schools nationally, and we remain among the top 20 in federal research funding. Our faculty and students have been recognized nationally and internationally, and our alumni make us proud every day with their accomplishments and the impact they have in their communities. Our school's accomplishments are a testament to the dedication of the entire School of Pharmacy community including the support of individuals who share our passion for advancing pharmacy education. Please consider giving a gift today that will serve as an investment in not only our school, but also the health and well-being of communities across the nation in the years to come. Today, Ole Miss launches its Giving Day 2024. As part of Ole Miss's School of Business, the Mississippi Small Business Development Center provides entrepreneurial support across all 82 counties of the Magnolia State. In 2023, Mississippi SBDC counseled over 6,000 clients, helped clients create 329 new businesses and 1,094 jobs. The SBDC has recently enhanced its capacity with the creation of the RISE Center, enabling business school MBA students to undertake projects that significantly contribute to Mississippi businesses focused on expansion. With your gift, Mississippi SBDC can continue to support scholarships for MBA students and provide a real-world, valuable experiential learning experience. Build your legacy on Ole Miss Giving Day 2024 by clicking the link in the caption 
Thank you and hotty toddy.
Dear Ole Miss family, my name is Samantha Seb. Daniel Connor. Joe Curry. Piper Lind. You can call me Sam. I chose to attend the University of Mississippi because when I visited Oxford while attending my admitted student tour, it immediately felt like home. I always felt welcomed and celebrated. I'm originally from Australia, Mississippi. And when I first chose the University of Mississippi back in 2012, I was 18 years old. Ole Miss lifted me and provided me with the tools and resources to build my confidence and make a difference in the world around me. I completed an accountancy degree, and actually, I was a Hall of Fame graduate. This year, my fellow students elected me as Miss Ole Miss. My education would not be possible without the support of the donors who have established a scholarship in their name. I've been able to focus solely on my education, my research, and my personal and career development. I was recently elected Mr. Ole Miss, and this would not have been possible without the support, guidance, and mentorship of individuals within the Honors College, Lot Leadership Institute, and the Ole Miss Women's Council. The majority of my educational experiences were covered through donor funding, and I'm extremely appreciative of those individuals who have helped me achieve my educational goals. Today is Giving Day. Giving Day is for everyone, not just major donors. If you're a donor, your funding and support allows students like me to take advantage of every educational opportunity at Ole Miss without the burden of having to worry about paying for our education. There are so many important programs to support today. In many ways, you can show your love for Ole Miss. From a $10 gift to a million dollar gift, Giving Day is for everyone who cares about the University of Mississippi. If you're already a donor, I hope you continue to give generously to what you love about Ole Miss. If you've never given back to the university before, today is the perfect day to start. Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream. Before we hop into our next interview, uh, we want to give a special shout out to our influencers. They have helped us break the record for the number of gifts raised on a giving day. Um, we want to give a special shout out to our top influencers, uh, Kelly Smith Marion and Angela Brown, both of which you heard mm. from earlier today. So shout out to them and thank you for their hard work. Remember, it is actually not too late to sign up to be an influencer. We still have a couple hours left of giving, so if you want to sign up to be an influencer, head on over to givingday.olemiss.edu. If you secure $250 or more to, to your unique link, you can secure the Silicone Never Lost a Party cup that Lucas showed us yesterday. So go ahead and head on over to givingday.olemiss.edu to do that now. And now I'm joined by Suzette Matthews. She is the Executive Director of Development. Suzette, thank you for joining Thanks us. Thanks so much for having me. So you want to throw a party because School of Law just won the Chancellor's Lunchtime Special. Yo. How many more funds is that or how much money was that? It was a $2,500 match. Wow. All okay. from um, Chancellor and Miss Emily and uh -huh. just so absolutely generous. Yes. And we, y'all, the School of Education Killing it. Now, I was told that the School of Law and School of Ed is not actually competing this year, but maybe in the background. And I, I, I've talked a lot about the competitiveness mm -hmm. between those two mm -hmm. schools, so I feel like there's always a little bit of something right. going on, even if you're not competing directly. We're Last year, as you know, the School of Education just beat us yes. very handily. And yep. so... This year, we are, don't have an official competition, uh -huh. but we're definitely still competing. You're right. Mm -hmm. It's hard to let go of rivals. Very hard to let go of rivals. Yes. And I love the teachers, and I love Willie Price. I'm actually just jealous that they have such great students yes. and the, the babies. They can use the cute kids I mean, to advocate yes. for things like right. a fish tank and Absolutely. playground equipment. And, yes. and how can you say no? Uh, you can't. You literally cannot say no to the cute children. I can't. Absolutely. So what is your favorite part about Giving Day? Oh, my favorite part about Giving Day is that we're able to focus on um, donors of all levels. You know, a $5 donation has just as much impact as a million-dollar donation on Giving Day. Right. And I think it just brings students to the table. It helps create a culture of philanthropy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so proud of all of our units. We've gotten more donations this year, I think, than ever we've gotten on Giving Day. Yes. And everyone is just bringing it this year, and I yeah. really love that. Absolutely. Are there any projects over at the law school that you are most excited about? Yes. Well, we just finished up. Um, a very a gracious anonymous donor was going to give $10,000 if we got 50 students to give. So wow. we just finished that up. Awesome. But we also have these hats here. Love. Um, that's very Ole Miss Law. And we're giving those to um, our first 50 donors over $50. Okay. And we have a beautiful Wyatt Waters number numbered print of the law school okay. that we are giving away if you donate over two hundred and fifty dollars okay awesome how have you guys been encouraging your students to give yes we've had um 
a little giving day party um, today in the law school atrium. Yesterday we had um, ice cream in the atrium. Unfortunately, Fun. the weather's not been great to have it outside. That's okay. But we've just really been trying to encourage our students to give back, start the culture of philanthropy. We yes. have the flagship society, which is a donation of only $24 yes. to a graduating um, 3L or senior, whichever mm -hmm. unit you're in, mm -hmm. and um, then get their beautiful cord for it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Shout out again to the flagship society. It's not too late to join that. If you give $24, join the flagship society and you get an extra graduation cord. So not a bad deal at all. Not a bad deal. Um, what challenges have you guys been really rallying behind and supporting this giving day? Um, at the law school, we've been really rallying behind um, the student challenge has been one of our best and biggest challenges. We have a clinical programs challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a scholarship that was established um, in honor of one of our alums. And so really, we've just been behind all of them, full force. Mm -hmm. Haven't put, We're not pumping the brakes until 5.48 p.m. today. Yes, absolutely. What are some of the biggest areas of need or some of the bigger projects at the School of Law that this money raised on giving day is going towards? Yes. Um, so we have a lot of student support, um, mm -hmm. a lot of student scholarships. We have um, three oral advocacy teams that travel all around the country, the mm -hmm. Negotiation Board, Trial Advocacy Board, and Moot Court Board that mm -hmm. always are in need of funding. Mm -hmm. They brought home two national championships this year. Oh, wow. So awesome. um, we're just so excited to support them mm -hmm. and continue to fundraise for those student initiatives. Right. So you mentioned that you also work with um, different units across campus. Are there any other units you want to shout out this giving day? Yes, absolutely. So the College of Liberal Arts has a $2,500 challenge issued by Dean Cohen. Okay. Whichever department or unit in the college raise, it gets the um, the sheer volume of donations gets the most, okay. um, gets $2,500 extra dollars. Okay. I just looked a minute ago and um, band was up there and then psychology right under them. Okay. And then um, the School of Education, of course, they have um, a huge number of challenges and they've been yes. killing it. But yes. I do want those children at Willie Price to get that playground. Yes. And um, fund all of their initiatives. And yep. the School of Engineering, um, their dean has also, uh, sorry, also no. issued a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so I think just, you know, supporting all, the, all of our academic unit is is great today yes. and every day. Absolutely. And as a reminder with these leaderboard challenges, it's not the amount or the it's not the 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 num it's the number of gifts that count, not yes. the size of gifts. I've said yes. that line 500 <laughs> times today and I'm going to mess it up now. It is not the amount of the gift, but the number of gifts that matter. So yes. if you've only got five to ten dollars that you can throw, it into still makes challenge, a difference. It makes a difference. It makes a huge difference, especially because we're able to leverage and help our units get more things on Giving Day. Yes, it's also so encouraging to see so many people rally behind things they love, mm -hmm. and people do have a lot of interest. So you can give a few, you know, smaller gifts to a lot of different units that helps yes. make an impact. Absolutely, absolutely. Are there any last words before we sign off? Um, everybody, go and donate. We have two four hours and yes. 40 minutes until we wrap this up and we really appreciate all of your support yes absolutely i'm looking at our giving day countdown clock we've got three hours 38 minutes 56 seconds okay. we have raised six million two hundred twenty thousand three hundred forty six dollars with 2611 gifts so i think the momentum is continuing to move up that that number is just continuing to go that's so right it's not over till it's over it is not over till it's over so we will see you back here in about 15 to 20 minutes and we will continue with our giving day live stream hotty toddy
I think for me personally, I, I, uh, this place was what I think it is for so many people and it was a launching pad. Um, I, I had some really big dreams coming out of high school and I didn't know this, but I, as I've gotten older, one of the things I realized is I like best in class places, companies, institutions, and I thought Ole Miss was best in class. And this is so hokey, this is so odd, but as a kid, I detailed cars and my best customers had the M insignia in their window, in their, in their, uh, on their car. And I thought they were the most gracious, the most generous, um, the most evolved. And I said, I want one of those M's. And so I think for young people who come from backgrounds like mine, who really need a difference made in their life, where they need a, a radically different outcome, they need to break a, a cycle. For me, that, that was a cycle of poverty. This place ensconced me with all the right people like Dr. Grisham and potentially Kaya uh, that helped me to break cycles. In our service and our giving back, it has made us better human beings. Um, connecting with young people, and I've recruited every kind of kid to this institution that you can imagine. Kids with backgrounds like mine, kids who don't look like me and whose parents have lots of resources. And in engaging and giving back and figuring out how can we do our part to advance the mission of the university, I just feel like we've become better people, better citizens. And I think about, I mean, who would I be if, if I were unwilling to do that and be that in the same way that folks, folks have been that for me. And we're always thinking about, we just don't want to give. We're not just falling over all over ourselves to, to give, but we want to give thoughtfully and in a way that enhances the university, changes someone's life, um, and in a way that we can actually get other people on the bus to give and help support the mission of this really, really special difference-making place. And when you come back and when you pitch in with programs like the Grisham Fellows, do you feel like everyone on campus is a good partner and it wants to pitch in and help out to make those things happen? Absolutely. Not, not just everyone on campus, but the Ole Miss community. We get calls with people saying, what can we do? How can we help? And, you know, we set this up, we, we, the, the work that we do with the Grisham Fellows, we, we fund that through a fund that we have at the foundation in my mom's honor, the Annette Weir Fund. And this place is really special and, and I think folks really believing in the mission and getting behind the mission. And um, so not only on campus have folks been wonderful to work with, but the Ole Miss community at large has just been tremendous. Every kind of person, every age group. Uh, I think about the principal at Newton High School, who's an oldest graduate who, who we partner with, bring students here, uh, Sonia Chapman. I think about um, my friends who are 90, who graduated in 
1956, 1958, 1962, um, just how they believe in what we're doing and they get behind it. And I think about Dr. Grisham, who, you know, while he's a professor emeritus, he's still engaging and, and speaking to our students, he and Mrs. Grisham. And so, not only on this campus have people been really special to work with, but people just in the, the whole Ole Miss ecosystem have been truly remarkable. The gift that one gives when it's thoughtful, when it's, when it's approached the right way, it begets other gifts. And for us, it's been really magical to see that happen. That we do our part, other people line up to do their part. We love that. We love that. And so we, we try not to, anything we're doing, uh, anything that we believe in, we, we, we try to um, do our part first before we ask anybody else to, to consider what, what might be appropriate for them to do. And Rondalyn, you're not an alum, but you've become a very honorary member of the Ole Miss family. Yes, thank you for that. Um, I think my first visit here, it, it was very much, very magical. And I have felt that way ever since. Uh, a lot of what Bruce says, that's how I felt. Uh, and, and I'm not a student here, but my experience with everyone, just in the outpouring of their concern, how they have just embraced what we are doing, uh, their willingness to to be here for the students and to e even, like I said, to embrace the ideas that we've had to reach out to the students and to be a part of that and to work with the, the faculty, the staff, and just the community here to help these students have this experience and be exposed to what the University of Mississippi has to offer. Uh, I feel very honored and special myself. It is very, very fulfilling, absolutely. I cannot think of a better group of people to work with. Um, I know the majority of the people through Bruce and then the others that I've become, uh, that I've known just on my own, but they have embraced me and they embrace the students in that very same manner. And so to see and witness others come and have that same experience that I had and be able to thrive and see their dreams and their future come alive here and that you're being able to be a part of that and to see it happen for them it really is magical and it's very fulfilling knowing that you can help make a difference in someone else's life and that's really what what it's all about is being able to be of service to others
Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream. I am joined now by Caitlin Childress. She is the Associate Director of Development for the School of Accountancy. Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So it has been a phenomenal Giving Day so far. Obviously, we're not done yet, but it has been so wonderful. What would you say is your favorite part of Giving Day? Oh, I love Giving Day. I think Giving Day is so fun. I would say maybe two things. I would say one, the collaborative aspect. I think it's awesome that we can all come together, whether you're a student or a parent. Um, alums of all ages can come together um, and support the university on one day. So Yes, exactly. And I think also, I think it's important to be able to celebrate annual size gifts. Yes. So like, I'm a major gift officer. That's my world. Okay. Not everyone can give $100,000. Right. So I think it's important that we celebrate the people who give $5. Yes. Um, and so Giving Day is really special for that reason. Yes, absolutely. What do you like most about working with the School of Accountancy? Um, I think just meeting all of our incredible alums. So I think just hearing people's stories, um, what their education did for them, hearing about their careers, um, mm -hmm. and finding ways to get them plugged back into the university. So. Yes, absolutely. So tell us about some of the different challenges going on at the accounting school for Giving Day. Okay. Um, fundraising in general, not necessarily Giving Day, yes. but in general, um, we're, we're building a new building. It's a 100,000 square foot building on the corner of Grove Loop and yes. University Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, huge project. Um, hopefully everyone's heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be amazing. We really need it for, for growth, for competing in rankings, for all of that. Um, and so it's a challenge right now to get the private support that we need. Um, and so Giving Day is really important because we need to get that on everyone's radar. Um, and we need everyone to help with that. So Yes, absolutely. We talked about the new accountancy building yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it's going to overlook the Grove, from what I hear. Yes. And I had the opportunity to go into the new STEM building, which overlooks Vault Hemingway Stadium. Uh -huh. Some of the labs do. And I was like, what? And I, I mean, students can be basing their major off of these. Yeah, absolutely. That we don't have yeah. to offer them. Yeah. Like, that's incredible. Uh huh. I'm very jealous of yeah. the of all of the wonderful views and classrooms they're going to get. That's incredible. We're ready. We're ready for it to happen. Yes, so. absolutely. So, aside from the new facility, what are some other fundraising priorities right now at the School of Accountancy? So, I think scholarships are always important. Mm -hmm. Dean's fund, things like that. But I mean. I'm going to say it again, building, building, building. Yes. That is what we're focused on. Um, we need every dollar to go to that right now. Yes, but, absolutely. Yeah. Do we have an estimated like construction date of that? Yeah. Like, can we give people <laughs> maybe like a timeline to look forward to? Uh, we'll, we'll reconvene after giving day. Okay. Say, no, I'm yes. kidding. Um, <laughs> Come I, back to it. We, that's the million dollar question. We all want that. We want it as soon as possible. We just yes. hit the $15 million mark mm -hmm. this week. And wow. So we've raised okay. $15 million in private support. Um, we need about another 15, so yes. we're getting there. We'll get there. So yeah. Maybe we'll get there by 548 today. Yeah, yeah, so come on, everyone, get Anyone yeah. got a quick 15 mil that we're yeah, going to throw right. into the pot, yeah. we'll take it. We'll take yeah. it. All right, any last words you want to talk about with School of Accountancy, Giving Day in general, giving to the university at all? Just thank you. Thanks to everyone yes. who's bought into this, um, accounting and just the university in general. We really need you. Um, I think it's really important and exciting. So thanks for all you're doing. Thanks for tuning in um, and everything. Yes, so, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. We will be back soon, and we will be chatting with some students next. We've got the ASB president and vice president coming to chat. I think Lucas is going to stop back by. So don't go anywhere. We will be back at the top of the hour. Potty toddy.
Hello, Ole Miss family. Thank you for your enthusiastic response to Giving Day 2024. Your support now creates opportunities that help our university and our students continue to grow and thrive. Your support now strengthens the people, experiences, and groundbreaking work that make this place so extraordinary. On Giving Day, you can make a powerful impact on Ole Miss. If you haven't given yet, now is the time to combine your gift with others. With your support, we can make an impact on communities and our state and the world. Thank you again and Howdy Toddy. Legacy isn't just about where you're from, it's about where you're going. So where are you going? I'm going to Ole Miss. I'm going to make a difference. Just like my granddad. I'm going to make the bestseller list. And I'm going to help him get there. I'm going to win a championship. Again! I'm going to break the world record. I'm going to take the next step. I'm going to give back to my community. And our alma mater. I am the first in my family to graduate. Ole Miss. Build your legacy. Ooh, what's that I spy? A golden little statement piece could spice up your life. Your 8 a.m. lecture crush won't be able to keep their eyes off you with this shiny red and gold Lyceum lapel pin dazzling in the fluorescent lights of the classroom. All it takes is a monthly recurring donation. Just select recurring at checkout and this fine piece of jewelry is all yours.
Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream. I am joined now by our ASV president and vice president. We have Hannah and Jack. Thank you all so much for coming to chat with us today, this Giving Day. Before we dive into questions, why don't you two introduce yourself, major, hometown, all that good stuff. I love it. Well, my name is Hannah Watts. I'm from Columbia, Mississippi, and I'm a current junior, double majoring in secondary English ed and public policy leadership with a Spanish minor. Awesome. So, yeah. I'm Jack Jones. I am a sophomore. Um, I'm from Murray, Kentucky, and I am an economics major. Awesome. Okay, so we've got two students, one out of state, one in state. So I want to hear from both of you as to why you chose Ole Miss. I really was drawn to Ole Miss by two academic programs here. In high school, I became very passionate about education policy. And so the Mississippi Excellence in Teaching Program, allowing me to be in the classroom starting freshman year was really important to me, as well as the Trent Lott Leadership Program with really connecting me policy-wise, but developing me as a leader. And both those programs have really fed into my involvement here mm -hmm. in ASB. Um, but that those programs are really huge reasons about yeah. why I chose Ole Miss. Awesome. Well, I did not plan to come to Ole Miss okay. at all. Um, all right. I looked at three or four different schools and I came down here kind of on a whim. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that went here and I toured campus and I fell in love with it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really hard not to fall in love with. I think that's kind of a universal experience. That seems and to so, be a trend. Yeah. Exactly. And so I said I was coming here and I came. Awesome. I love it. My best friend is from Seattle, Washington and she came here and she all, people always ask her like, how did you end up in Mississippi? And it was the same thing. She visited one time and told her mom, I think this is the place for me. I think this is where we're going. Yeah, it has that effect on people. Got to do it. So you're both obviously really involved at ASB. I mean, you're president and vice president. What is the purpose of ASB? Really, our main job, I think, as the Associated Student Body is to connect with our students and really be integral in connecting with them to know their needs um, and how we can best serve them and represent them when it comes to asking the Chancellor to work with us on different initiatives um, and being the student voice when it comes to um, different faculty and staff here at Ole Miss. Jack, if you'd like to add on to that. <laughs> I think it's essentially to be the main advocate for students, right? Yeah. I mean, administration can't meet with every single student. There right. has to be some sort of representative, and so we have a unique opportunity to be that representative, and that's what our job is to do. Yeah. What are some of um, you guys' favorite initiatives that ASB has put forth? I've most recently served in the Senate, and one thing about the Senate is we, we are all with the biggest branch and most externally facing, and so we're always working on a bunch of different things, but I think something new that we started this year um, was our housing committee, okay. um, and it was really cool to get to work with that committee on um, working to gather different um, leases from different housing complexes that students live in mm -hmm. and surveying the students about their needs as far as off-campus and on-campus housing goes and so mm -hmm. we were engaging with different RAs and it was awesome to watch that committee kind of really get to see how as Ole Miss grows our housing needs are changing a lot right. and knowing how we can continue to better serve students when it comes to one of those most essential needs. Right. Right, absolutely. What about like an event that ASB hosts? Do y'all have a favorite event that you guys always look forward to? I think one of my favorite events, and these happen monthly, sometimes multiple times a month, um, are ASB 365s. Mm -hmm. So with that, we'll have different ASB members out on the Union Plaza, mm -hmm. and we'll do each ASB 365 has a different theme. Mm -hmm. My favorite theme has to be when we paired with dining because okay. they brought out these bikes that when a student pedaled on the bike, um, it would like blend up their smoothie. Oh, how cool. <laughs> I oh know. my gosh, that's It was so, cool. so fun. Yeah. And we had like, there were even tour groups coming by. <laughs> like what the heck <laughs> yes. is going on at it the It would hop Plaza. on the bikes as well with the students. And so it was, it was really cool. How fun. Um, kind of fun, a little bit of a spectacle, but I love our ASB 365s because uh -huh. it's just people out there from all different branches and you really get to engage with students as they walk across one of the most trafficked areas on campus. Yes. Just what about you? I'm a big fan of uh, the everybody's events that we do. So mm -hmm. we've got uh, everybody's formal mm -hmm. every single fall and everybody's tent um, mm -hmm. at a whole lot of football games mm -hmm. every season. 
um, and it's really centered on, you know, non-Greek outreach. Mm -hmm. You know, we are a big Greek school, so mm -hmm. trying to contact, connect with people that are non-Greek, mm -hmm. um, have spaces for them to come to, and, and I really enjoy those. Yeah. So I feel like ASB in and of itself, it's such a large organization, and to an incoming student, whether they're a freshman or a transfer, it might seem a little overwhelming and intimidating. How can students get involved in ASB? You want me to take that? You? Okay. Um, well, right now is a perfect time to get involved in ASB because yep. we just transferred leadership. Okay. So, um, Ole Miss Instagram for ASB, Ole Miss ASB Instagram, mm -hmm. perfect place to go find applications, find ways to join. Mm -hmm. um, I always say that whatever you want to do, there's probably a spot for you in ASB. It's a, yes. such a big organization. Um, and then as far as when freshmen come next year, you know, there's an opportunity to get involved as a leg aide for the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, there's some opportunities in the Secretary's Department as well. Mm -hmm. But really, any way you want to get involved, there's a way in ASB. Yeah. And another kind of opportunity for those first years, freshmen or transfers, um, FYE is a really great program, not just for connecting students to ASB because it is a part of ASB, but also to connect students to different RSOs, um, registered student organizations, or different departments on campus. They're a really great resource, and it's just a meeting once a week with a bunch of different student leaders and an awesome program to be a part of, which I joined my freshman year here. Yes, awesome. What are what are are you guys looking forward to in this next year with ASB? I think there's a lot to look forward to. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to pinpoint one thing for me, um, but to be honest, I'm very excited to work with this great group of people. Um, mm -hmm. The new exec is is awesome. I think mm -hmm. uh, Ole Miss chose very well, and mm -hmm. so I'm excited to, to get to working with them um, and to serve the students through that. We all have a bunch of awesome ideas as far as engaging the student body, and mm -hmm. last night we elected, was it eight new senators? Eight new senators. Um, and they came with a bunch of great ideas mm -hmm. um, in their open senate speeches, and so getting to, to work with them and Ole Miss faculty um, to, to connect students and, and to meet their needs is something I'm, I'm very excited for. Yeah. I agree. Um, one of the other things that I'm really excited about is our secretary, Braxton Dagg, mm -hmm. has really taken a stance on um, more philanthropy opportunities mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. um, I think Hannah's going to talk a little bit about our Adopt-A-Basket opportunity, but yeah. uh, we're trying to expand that this year, and I'm very excited for that. Yeah. Awesome. So we looked to the future. Let's look in the past. What have been your favorite memories from this past academic year? A a ASB related or not? <laughs> one or e either one. Uh, favorite memories. Um, there was a senator that I got to work a lot with this past year where it, this was her first year. And mm -hmm. so she um, worked on a bill herself where she made price transparency. She worked with the Student Health Center mm -hmm. to publish their prices for the different services they offer on the website. Mm -hmm. So it was really awesome watching yeah. her to, to get to accomplish that. So that would have to be my favorite um, ASB memory. Mm -hmm. I think this kind of also is a little bit of an ASB memory, but um, from this past semester um, campaigning, I think it was something I think I was absolutely terrified for at uh -huh. first because I had watched so many people before me be out there on the Union Plaza and sharing mm -hmm. their platform um, but I was I was nervous to be doing that myself but mm -hmm. when it got to it it was really kind of uplifting to yeah. get to meet so many students on the Union Plaza and and hear what they want to see for Ole Miss yeah. um, and how I can work alongside them to accomplish that I think that that was a really cool yeah. cool opportunity I bet that is a lot of fun and I love that you guys are on the Union Plaza I don't know if this has been in your time here, but in years past, people were campaigning on Business Row. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people would avoid it like the plague. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to go. I don't want to have to get stickers. I don't want to have to do that. But you're right here, and it really creates a sense of community among students walking by. And it's approachable, and you can chat and get to know people. So that's wonderful. It is. I, I do like the Union Plaza better than Business Row, though I will say students still, they learn to to avoid a little bit. Yes, yes. We, we Put see the crowd in, <laughs> turn, yes. you know, yes. on the phone, that kind yes. of thing. Yes, but we've yeah. made it a little bit more student friendly by like we have candidates staying 
staying behind the table just right. so you know students yep. students don't feel like they're they're being approached too much. But right. um, it's okay. I I do love the Union yeah. Plaza. A lot That's great, that. Jack. What about you? What have been some of your favorite memories? Uh, I would say probably my favorite memory from this past year um, is we hosted SEC Exchange uh -huh. here at Ole Miss this past summer. Um, and so that is basically a student government conference for all of the uh, student governments in the SEC. Oh, awesome. Okay. Come, you know, and, and learn about each other, um, get ideas, mm -hmm. advice. And I thought that was a great opportunity um, to not only learn, but also since we hosted it this year to showcase our university and what yeah. we offer to the rest of the SEC. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. So. Clearly, we're at Giving Day. Um, we're trying to encourage people to make donations to our university. What would you say to donors, and why do you want donors? What do you want donors to know about why is it important to give to our university? Let you start with that. Well, I mean, I, I think that so much of what we are able to do and what we are able to offer at the University of Mississippi mm -hmm. is because of donors, right? right? Um, Nothing really that we're able to do would be possible without the generosity mm -hmm. of donors. And certainly a whole lot of the things that we do in ASB as far as philanthropy goes would be impossible mm -hmm. without donors. And so we're so grateful to anyone that's willing to donate, whether it's $10 or a million dollars, any bit helps. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's something that we've been stressing is that it's not the size of the gift, but any number counts. Any number will go a long way on giving day. So thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being here. We will be, ba be back soon. We've got some more students to chat with. I think that we're going to do some trivia later on. So be sure to tune in and we will see you soon. Hotty toddy. Thank you all.
Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream. We have huge news as one of the largest and coolest Giving Day gifts has just closed. Barbara Beckman of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Louisiana, just made a gift of five million dollars. Round of applause. That's insane. Wow. Absolutely incredible. So I want to tell you guys about Miss Beckman. I'm going to read this right off the screen because we need. I mean, she is. This is incredible. So. Uh, Barbara was the first female graduate of the School of Engineering and she is celebrating Giving Day by committing a five million dollar estate gift to the Department of Chemical Engineering which will now be named in her honor. Barbara is a trailblazer, oh trailblazer and always has been. She was also the first female engineer to work at ExxonMobil where she is still working. She's been with this company for 63 years, longer than any other employee at the company. This is absolutely incredible. Barbara says engineering is about problem solving, which is one of her major interests. She considered going into medicine, but a high school guidance counselor helped her discover an interest in engineering. She said, I committed this gift because I felt Ole Miss has a huge part in where I am today, and the school does a much better job than other universities in preparing engineering students for their careers. She has a strong history of giving back. She, she served for years on the Engineering Alumni Chapter Board and the Engineering School Advisory Board. Recently, uh, the Barbara K. Beckman Fund for the school's Society of Women Engineers funded 21 students to the Society of Women Engineers Conference in Los Angeles, California. The purpose of her gift is to provide income to ensure that quality teaching, research, and service will be available to future generations of Ole Miss students. And from now on, the Department of Chemical Engineering will be called the Barbara Kerr Beckman Department of Chemical Engineering. Round of applause again. Absolutely incredible. You can join Barbara's gift by heading over to givingday.olemiss.com edu and support the school of engineering remember it's not about the the amount of the gift it's how many gifts but again we are so thankful to miss beckman for this incredible incredible gift i awesome. want her to be my best friend Talk she about, sounds like, awesome power. no like girl boss like the definition absolutely. sorry i had to say that i love it absolutely love it okay now i think we're going to cut to some trivia i'm looking at myself on a tv screen which has not happened this entire two days so this is going to get interesting um, we got some trivia questions going on though. Back with Madeline and Lucas. All right, here we go. Yay. We are celebrating the 175th academic year at the University of Mississippi. What is the Latin word for 175th anniversary? I should know this. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to pronounce these. Team. Dos. Oh yeah, that's. I'm going B. No, that's C, I know this one. I'm pretty sure it's D. All right, I'm going B. It's we C, all yeah. have different answers. Uh oh. That's not right. <laughs> Latin is fun. I think that you're lying. Okay, so. Wait. That doesn't feel real, but that okay. feel right. I feel like there okay. should be a right or wrong answer. Whatever. Okay. What is what the is, speed limit? Why is the speed limit on campus oh. 18 oh. miles per hour? Sorry, I'm hour. dyslexic. 15 miles per hour is too slow. Yes. 18 is Chancellor Boyce's lucky number. Ole Miss Legend Archie Manning were 18. C. C. C, obviously. Are we on agreement? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I should have. I think they'd take away our old Miss card if we didn't get that one right, honestly. I did not. I thought that. I thought it was 18 because, you know, everyone goes a little above the speed limit. And so they're like, if we say 20, they'll go 25. So if we That's say incorrect. 18, they'll go 20. That's a good. That's a good thought. That's what I thought. It's a good little method. It's a good thought, but it's. Yeah. Nice psychological wrong, experiment for you. Yeah, no, I am <laughs> wrong though. So we thought that the that uh, UPD was playing mind games on us, trying I to get did. us to drive slower than actual. I did. <laughs> All right, what's our next one? What percentage of Ole Miss students receive financial aid or scholarships? Ooh, I don't know this one. It's gonna be like no idea. It's gonna be like ninety uh -huh. percent. Fifty. Twenty-five. I love waiting for the answer this to pop up. D. I'm going D. I'm going to go A. I was going to go A, too. I'm going to go A. I'm going to go half. We should keep score or something. Actually, I think, mm, I think I'm wrong. I feel like it's... <gasps> Lucas, Lucas, you're right. That's what I'm saying. Everyone, everyone gets a little something. Hey, something. the gifts go you're to right. scholarships, so donate. Yes. At giving. Exactly. 80% of our you. students will benefit yes. from the gifts given. Wait, that's crazy. 80%. That is crazy. I did not think that it was No, that I didn't think about it like that. 80%. Yep. That's wow. incredible. Bernard Observatory never been. Hmm. A restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, there sh this shouldn't be multiple choice. No. It should just be we written. Have to, yeah, written response. I don't. I'm going to 
wouldn't say a sorority house because I feel like I'm gonna say a that's hospital. That's like some lore. I'm gonna say an observatory. If, an observe. Feel like that's a trick. I question. feel like it's at. There's. They're adding e. If it's not a sorority house, like if that's not the. I need to know answer, all I, of the lore behind my that. My mind is gonna be blown. Was it a hospital? That's gonna be crazy if it was a hospital. It's I think plausible. It, that, but Farley was a hospital during the, the one of the wars. <laughs> I think Bernard might have been too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going B. I'm gonna say it was never a sorority B. house. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll go B. That's what I said at first. What sorority? I should have kept my answer. What sorority was it? Does anyone have, have, have? Can we get that Somebody info? Work. Somebody work on Can that. Can someone please Google that? <laughs> Somebody work on Let that us know. I need to know what sorority was housed in observatory. I hope it was Katie. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Okay. Which two Ivy League schools? Oh, I know, oh, I know this one. Harvard and Yale. Yes. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. sorry. Well, I just knew it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You don't get to guess now. C. Such I didn't. Spoilers. My bad. I think Harvard it's C. And Yale. I think you might be right. I think you might I think be right. C. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Yes. Yay. I taught EDHE. That's guys. the only way I know this. My I should probably know more of the answers. Do Jeopardy with us, and that was one of the questions. Like Old Miss Jeopardy? Well, it was like a Jeopardy at our Christmas party, and he would ask us random questions. Fun. Okay. Not fun. Who is university's first female professor? Uh, Emma Gaddy. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm gonna feel like a disappointment to feminism, the fact that I don't know this. Yeah, as a woman. I'm gonna say Isom. That's what I was gonna say, because the Isom house. Gloria? That's like an old timey name. We Gloria have Kellum. The Isom Center. The Isom House. And there's Isom House. Like, I just, that looks familiar. I'm going Gloria. Okay. Let's see. Yes. yes. Finally. Teach oratory. The, what is that? What is oratory? <laughs> this is just making me. I'm learning so much. I have more questions. What is that? An oratory. I don't know. What is that? Oh, no, this? I took oratory. That class, that class was great. You took it? What'd you learn? Just about like oratorism. Oratory is oratory. Yeah. 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 Just sounds your, interesting. Your yeah. General oratory. <laughs> general aura. <laughs> yeah. And Tories. Yeah. Both. Okay. Where can you find 100-year-old graffiti made by students on campus? Don't know this. I didn't know that. Sand Grove. Grove. Ventress. Ventress. I know the answer. It's Ventress. Okay. It's I'm Ventress. gonna say Ventress. <laughs> Maybe, no, I'm going to go Fulton Chapel. Ha ha. Damn. Yes, because last year during the Given A live stream, we got to go up into the the turret, is what it's called, and people had signed it. We got to see where Eli Manning signed it. Oh, yeah. Yes. My I got to sign my name. That. Not Maybe oh. a little bit more important than Eli Manning, but maybe not. I don't no, know. Emma's name is up there too, y'all. It is. Please <laughs> remember when you're talking about Eli, also talk about Emma. Remember Eli Manning and Emma Gaddy. <laughs> um, Emma Dickerson. How do Emma we Dickerson, edit, whatever can we I edit am now. Graffiti? Huh? Can this graffiti be edited? Can we, anyone go up there? I, want to sign I don't think so. I will say there was there was a special. It's it's over now, but there was a special opportunity for students in the College of Liberal Arts. Can't remember what it was to receive the incentive, but they did take a group of students up to the turret to sign. And it's like it's locked. Like when you go upstairs in the school in the College of Liberal Arts, there's like a locked door, and it's a really tight space, like really small, mm -hmm. and it's like a little twisty. Staircase and yeah, tons and tons of names signed up there. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah, really cool. They've got it locked up. They do. Why is Lyceum called the Lyceum? I just thought it was a thing. I don't know. I'm gonna say that's just. I thought what it was the a good name was. of a building. Something to do with lice. Lice. <laughs> that's where lice treatments are held. Yeah, Learn it used to be urine a hospital and communicate. For lice. Yeah, it was a lice hospital. People, you would go back there and people would just be coming through here. I like oh, C, nice but I feel speaker. like it's A. I'm ignoring y'all's conversation about lice. Um, Ancient Greek philosophers taught. See, I, that feels too not right. I don't know. I like, I like, I think it's A. I, I hope it's C because I think that that's just kind of funny. <laughs> but I think it's I A. I think it's A, actually, now that I'm reading the other answers. <laughs> just a side note. If, if I wasn't uh, an accounting major, uh -huh. I'd want to be a, a lice picker. 
Okay, Lucas. Okay. You could have picked me and my sister's hair growing up. I have three younger sisters. We get lice every summer. Every summer? <laughs> yeah. Every fun. single summer. That's so gross. <laughs> I don't know why we're talking about it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That is cool. So you have, a, you have a job if this falls through, Lucas. Perfect. Okay. Lice picking. Ah, oh, we were right. Okay. Named in honor of the origins of classical education. Look at that. Oh, classical education. All right. Is that it? Oh. How many Rhodes Scholarships have been awarded to Ole Miss students? I knew this once upon a time. I only know this because of the graphic that you made. You know this? No. Oh. <laughs> no. I, I, okay, I'm going to say I'm process say elimination. C. It's A or C. It's got to be more than two. I'm going to say 14. That yeah, just seems I'll like say a 14. Good that seems like a good guess. 14. When in doubt, pick C. Did we all learn that in high school? I learned that pretty early on, and um, it was a method I used throughout my academic career. You know, I went to a, an ACT prep. We were wrong. Oh, we it's were actually wrong. 27. That's incredible. See, Wait, that's, that's crazy. See. Okay, I, tell us. I went to an ACT prep course, uh -huh. and they were like, you know how they always, you've always heard pick C? Uh-huh. They were like, the ACT people know that, and so they use C the least amount on like, yeah. the hardest questions. That's like, some really you... messed up reverse psychology. Yeah, 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 the that's ACT inflicted yeah. on all of us, but okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we were wrong anyways. It's B. All right. That's our last trivia question. Real quick, how has Giving Day been for y'all? So great. So great. What's been your favorite part so far? Um, still the magic show. That was yesterday. The yeah. magic show was so fun, and Ron Rischlack is so entertaining yeah. and it was just so cool to watch. I'm still thinking about the magic show. Yeah. Lucas, what about you? I'm so sad. I'm so sad that I missed that magic show. You missed show. the magic show? Was it, so was it magical? It was it, so magical. Was. What was like the greatest trick? The was it cards? The Canada thing was The crazy. Canada thing was crazy. Also, the, um, any of the, like the mind ones where it was like, okay, pick up, pick up flag and then go to the red one, go to the yellow one. Yeah, that was and crazy. we landed on the one that, he had picked I, that was really crazy, was crazy. also Man. at the end where he pulled all the confetti out of his mouth was like equally gross and also really <laughs> impressive yeah oh, like man really... ate a bunch of confetti what, well he ate what like i don't a... even know how it got in his mouth i don't either i thought it was like a, like a piece of paper and then all of a sudden there's I mean, like no it was a tissue and then it was yes not a tissue and he it was, just... was like and he just kept going yeah yeah it was and it was insane it was insane that's true also talent. i know y'all miss it but g1's performance today her violin I'm so sad I missed the violin performance. Was beautiful. Loved it. We should always have a musical guest when we do these things. We should have a musical guest. Who would be your dream musical guest for giving Harry day? Harry Styles. Okay. Lucas, what about you? Harry Styles. Okay. Thank you, Lucas. Duff. Well, I'm going to say Taylor Swift. Yeah, that's my second. That's okay. fine. We'll agree to disagree there. They can perform together. What if? That. You think they'll perform um, Is It Over Now together? I was about to say Say Don't Go or something. Well, what yeah. if they do? <laughs> Grove Stage. <gasps> the Grove Spring Concert. Spring Concert. Incredible. Taylor Swift Great and Harry idea. Styles. Oh my God. I'm sure it <laughs> wouldn't out. shut down the city of Oxford. That would oh, be amazing. I think we could afford them. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep, give yeah. money. So yeah, can give money them. so we can afford Harry Styles and Taylor Swift. Please. Please. <laughs> LOL. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll be back at the top of the hour. Hottie toddy.
Hello Ole Miss and welcome back to a very special giving day episode of Walking with Champions. I'm your host, Lucas Weenie, and today we are joined with Carol Trent Imbler, and she's a student who has been directly impacted by the gifts being donated to the university. So thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. How are you doing today? I'm good. Ready to get walking. All right. So I'm just going to get started with our first question. Just could you tell us what exactly brought you to the University of Mississippi? So I'm originally from Tupelo, so about an hour down the road. Um, I've grown up on campus and my sister graduated here and I saw what opportunities it presented for her and I knew I had to be a part of it. All right, mm -hmm. good stuff. And so how has Giving Day and the gifts given to the university directly impacted you? So thankfully I have been fully funded my education. Um, I've paid zero dollars to attend Ole Miss. Wow. Um, so it's, it's been a huge impact not only for myself and for my future, but for my family and what it means to gain an education. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. And what would you say to someone to encourage them if they're a little bit apprehensive about donating? I think it's important to think about the future of the university. I remember coming as a child and seeing the difference, differences we've had now on campus. Um, and to see that change happens from gifts from donors and from giving days. So I'm excited and encourage everyone to really um, give what they can for the university. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then for our last question, just could you tell us what are your plans after graduation? So I'll graduate in May. Still undecided, I've applied to jobs from Dallas to Atlanta and kind of everywhere in between. So we're still figuring it out, but I'm excited. I know Ole Miss alum will be everywhere I go. So I'm excited to see what happens. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot to, lot to consider there. For sure. All right, well, before we sign off today, is there anything else you want to tell the people at home? Just hotty toddy and appreciate all of your gifts for Giving Day. All right, well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure. And Absolutely. you guys do not forget to like, comment, subscribe if you want to keep up with all the episodes of Walking with Champions. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Bye. When we built this brewery together, we all had aspirations of, yes, we're a brewery, yes, we give people beer, yes, we feed people, but what can we do beyond that? We kept saying, you know, why not Chattanooga? And why, why did Chattanooga not have the same amount of breweries as like in Asheville, North Carolina? One of our favorite things to do was to go to different breweries, and to this day, we still do. And I always love to read mission statements or see what they're doing within the community. And so when we opened up, I said, that's definitely something I want to be a part of. So I chose Ole Miss and really it, it came down to visiting and, and be able to see it in person and just the beauty of it, the atmosphere and I mean, Let's be honest, you, you go down to one sporting event, no matter what the sporting event again, it's just absolutely captivating. It was the only place, like Jake said, that people made you feel welcome. We do a lot of times when we'll go into restaurants here in Chattanooga when we're in the airport, we do yell hotty toddy, and that always leads into a conversation of when were you there, how long were you there, what was your degree in, and then naturally, were you in Greek life? So the, the beer world for me really started when my brother left the University of Mississippi and enrolled into the Charlotte School of Law, and I would go up and visit him. Essentially, I brought back a lot of the knowledge and the kits and the components to brew beer when I'd go and visit him and bring it back. And later on, that hobby kind of just kept picking up and picking up and going. And when I left Ole Miss and, and entered the oil and gas field, I worked a rotation where I was on the job site for roughly 21 days at a time and I was home for 21 days at a time and during that time off it was just the right amount of time to be bored enough to continue that hobby. We'd come back, land from being offshore and would brew a beer while enjoying a beer that I had previously brewed. One of my favorite desserts is a s'mores and we're like okay let's do a s'mores beer for our wedding. Well, Jake woke up one night in the oil rig, two in the morning, calls me. He said, 
Moon pies are local to Chattanooga. Moon pies are essentially s'mores. So let's brew a moon pie beer. Everybody raved over this beer, said, y'all need to open up a brewery. We said, no way, we're poor, broke college kids. Not gonna happen. From that night, somebody told us this building came up for bid. And this is an old trolley factory foundry. And so we submitted hand drawings, thinking no way we're gonna win of what we thought the concept of this building could be because it was just a blank canvas. We got a phone call about two weeks later. We didn't even have a house in Chattanooga. Said, hey, you won the bid. And that is when it all started. We moved to Chattanooga. I finished with my master's and then the build out for this happened. So when we started Naked River, like I tried to shy away from doing food, but ultimately at the end of the day, you've got to have something that keeps people here and if I was going to do something it was going to be something else that I was passionate about and we teamed up with a couple other people that had kind of similar passions and, and we launched the barbecue brand in the business and it's not easy. We cook roughly uh, 250 pounds of brisket, 300 pounds of pulled pork, 200 pounds of turkey, 200 pounds of chicken and a whole bunch of other things on that smoker every single week. It has been an absolute honor to be able to start this company and, and get to where we are and what makes us keep fighting forward and, and keep trying to expand and grow this company is, is the love and support that we've got from our community. Uh, we get every single time people coming in and so appreciative of what we're trying to do and our ultimate goal of becoming you know, the best brew pub in the Southeast, become the ultimate community brew pub. The amount of donations and, and uh, activity that we've, we've given back to the environment and, and really just the fun that we have as a team here together is, is, is really shining through. I mean, from day one, we set on upon a mission before we even made a profit at the brewery that we were gonna give back a large portion to, you know, certain funds. and. I think when we first started out, we, we worked with uh, a land conservation group here that basically bought up land to make sure that kept from development. I think we year one, we gave over $10,000 back to them, and then we moved on to different animal projects, working here with the Tennessee Aquarium, which is a world-renowned aquarium that really does a lot with rehabilitating species and, and, and trying to reintroduce them back to the environment and teaching and education are all big parts of that and big parts of us and why we wake up every day. And we're almost up to another 20 grand just to the aquarium alone. Every year we introduce a new beer and what we do, we pick a territory on the Tennessee River. Starting with our gorge, we did the gorge land trust and on the side of the gorge can is a part of a Tennessee River of where we gave back to that community. Uh, then we did one after that, and it's called the Sturgeon General, and that's when we started giving back to more of the water system, so we've done land so far water, um, and we helped reintroduce sturgeon into the Tennessee River. For our third year, we stuck with the, uh, the Tennessee Aquarium, and the year 2020 was the year of the turtles. So we did a turtle conservation, and it's called Cosmic Turtle. So Cosmic Turtle is that third stack to our series of beers, giving back to the turtles of reintroducing them into the wild conservation, research, and education. Every bit of that uh, really builds into, while we come back every day, it's a pride of knowing that we started this place for all the right reasons and we were able to make it work. We were able to do those things. We were able to have a fun environment, be serious in distribution, become one of the larger breweries in the South almost overnight, but still doing the right by the community and have them appreciate us for it. Ooh, what's that I spy? A golden little statement piece could spice up your life. Your 8 a.m. lecture crush won't be able to keep their eyes off you with this shiny red and gold lyceum lapel pin dazzling in the fluorescent lights of the classroom. All it takes is a monthly recurring donation. Just select recurring at checkout and this fine piece of jewelry is all yours.
Thanks to your generous support, the Ole Miss Business School continues to make a positive impact in tomorrow's world. Thank you for including your gift during Giving Day 2024. Thank you for supporting the Graduate School and investing in our graduate students on Giving Day. We appreciate your continued support now and in the future. On behalf of the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement, thank you. No matter how big or small your gift was throughout Giving Day 2024, we sincerely appreciate you and your generosity. Know that your gifts will go to support students not only today, but for generations to come. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Peter Grangy, and I serve as Dean in the School of Applied Sciences. And I just wanted to thank you for the gifts that you're giving during Giving Day 2024. Your generosity is impacting so many of our students and it will impact students for years to come. Thank you. meet emergent needs of all of our School of Ed students. Your Giving Day donation to Willie Price will help support an age-appropriate playground for all of the children at the school. Support the Mississippi Excellence in Teaching program, which funds scholarships for students who agree to teach in Mississippi for five years after graduation. Give to our Student Teaching Fund, which helps us provide education essential kits for our graduating students to take to their classrooms and counseling practices. Please support the Bridge Program. We provide resources and support to students on campus with autism. Support the Center of Math and Science Education and help us inspire students and teachers to get excited about the world of STEM. Support the Mississippi Geographic Alliance and help Mississippi teachers and students learn more about the world and everything in it. Give to Mississippi Teacher Corps, our fully funded alternate route program for teaching that partners with critical needs schools in Mississippi. Support the School of Education Excellence in Education Fund, which sponsors special projects and initiatives led by our faculty, staff, and students. You can also give and help us unlock general School of Education challenges. When 50 gifts are made to the School of Education in honor or in memory of someone, $2,000 will be given to the Annual Impact Fund, which helps us meet needs that arise throughout the year and allows us to say yes to creative ideas from students, staff, and faculty. And when we receive 500 gifts to the School of Education, the Hainel family will donate $25,000 to support the establishment of an endowment for our immediate need fund. What do we get when we donate? What do you get the Tupperware? I donate some food and I get a survey. Can I get one of those? Those look cool. It costs the 24 dollars of the class is 2024. This year, for Ole Miss Giving Day 2024, we are thrilled to highlight a few areas in the School of Business that many students utilize. As Ole Miss continues to shatter enrollment records, there's an ongoing need of support for student services, along with career preparation services and faculty and staff support. The Ole Miss School of Business is reaching new heights and approaching 5,000 students. With that, we are asking for your generosity in supporting many needs, including obtaining laptops for all of our business school advisors so that they can meet our students right where they are. We are also asking for support of our career preparation services, including providing opportunities for our students to go on exciting career treks and utilize new technology in the search for future career opportunities. 
Dean Syree has initiated a challenge gift to highlight the importance of supporting faculty and staff within the School of Business. Our amazing faculty help inspire our students to make discoveries that will help them succeed throughout their life. Faculty are the force multipliers, so using our resources to hire outstanding faculty impacts hundreds of students per semester. We are so excited for the opportunity that this day can provide to our students, faculty, and staff. As a student myself, I greatly appreciate the kindness of our alumni and friends and can't thank you enough for your support. Hotty toddy. The Ford Center hosts more than 150 events each year, and many of those events require the use of follow spots as an integral part of lighting a show. Our spotlights are now over 20 years old and must be replaced. Light a rose, oh, light a rose, oh. Light a rose, light a rose, oh. You can see from this video how an overall production is enhanced by lighting, specifically with the use of spotlights. Richard C. Ford Foundation and members of the Friends of the Ford Center are funding a Giving Day Challenge to raise the money needed to purchase three new spotlights. Please respond to their challenge today to ensure that the Ford Center can continue to present high quality performances that our audiences have come to expect.
Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream. Um, it's time for our last leaderboard challenge of Giving Day 2024. We have Leanne and Sean Tui's buzzer beater challenge. So this is your last opportunity to help your favorite area of campus secure some additional funds. And this is our largest jackpot of Giving Day. So here's how it works. 
The academic department or school that secures the most gifts between 4 and 5.48 p.m. will earn an additional $5,000 thanks to the generosity of the TUI family. Again, this challenge lasts until the end of Giving Day, which is 5.48 p.m., so give now. Head on over to givingday.olemiss.edu to help your favorite area of, of campus secure these extra funds. Remember, you can give through Venmo, Apple Pay, uh, PayPal, all major credit cards, so head on over givingday.olemiss.edu miss.edu to give now okay madeline what do you say we check in on some of these other challenges yes. that we've had going on here that sounds good to me all right let's see hey can, oh, can we help you can we help you looking for the union well oh, you're in the wait, union this is the union that's why i can't find it yeah well you're here <laughs> your your orientation dad I am. right do you, you want to have a seat down yeah. we're just chatting we're you want to come chatting. chat with us to orientation dad oh, man. i tell you what it's april it's hot out. Well, it's not even the heat. It's the, it's it's the, the humidity. humidity. You're exactly yeah, right. Did, did you go to law school at Ole Miss? Did I go to? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, lady was handing them out. You don't pass up on an Ole Miss hat. You're exactly right, especially yeah. not a free one. I came to school here, class of 95. I, I, I got a brick out there. It, uh, I hadn't been able to find it in a while, uh -huh. but it's out there. It's probably, like, way far away. 95 was a while back. Where y'all yeah. from? I'm, I'm from Moulton, Alabama. Moulton, Alabama? Mm -hmm. Did you come to Ole Miss? I did. Mm -hmm. How about you? I'm from Oxford, Mississippi. I grew oh. up here. Didn't yeah. venture too, too far <laughs> outside there, huh? <laughs> you, you have a daughter here, Ella Jane. How, yeah. How's her freshman uh, how's year her going? Freshman year going? I, I hadn't heard from her a whole lot. Uh, debit Just card when she works, needs though. money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been up a few times. You know, we got the condo and we go to. Is her dorm room still clean? No, it's not clean, but, you know, it is what it is. She, uh. She's just having a good time. You know, she's having fun. We're, we're getting ready for round two with Jackson Bradley and uh, just registered for orientation. Uh, really? Exciting. Orientation.olemiss.edu. Uh -huh. Sign, Sign up for up orientation. Right there. A lot of kids coming here in the fall. you got to get your spot. You're you exactly right. So you signed up for it. Did y'all uh, y'all do like the sorority thing when you were here? We, we did. did. We both yes. did, yeah. What were y'all? We were, we were Katie's. Katie's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's all Greek to me. I, I mean, KD, though, you know, my brother's sister, no, my brother's wife, uh -huh. pharmacist, was a KD, came here, Mackenzie Gaddy. No, I think I've heard of her. Mm. I think she might have been a few few pledge classes ahead of me, but I've heard the name. Sassy is what I've heard. Just what you heard? Sassy. She's but a sassy she does a good pharmacist? Job. Does a sassy pharmacist. That makes sense. But does a good job. That does makes a good sense. Job. Man, it's hot. You know, when I was here, it, I can't believe this is the union. There were flags everywhere. There was an arcade. Wasn't a there subway. a subway? There was a subway. Uh huh. Yeah, in the yeah. um, P.O. boxes. P.O. boxes. Yeah, had to check your mail. Mm -hmm. And there was one TV, and we would crowd around that and watch Price is Right when we didn't feel like going to class. Just I, like when you was in high school. I think there's like there's a couple TVs down there. Um, if you wanna. Yeah. You, you can you relive can your glory down days down and there. And they got food here now too. They do. Yeah, I've what heard. What kind of places? Well, they got Panda. Panda Express. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I mean. And Chick Fil A. Ooh. Chick Fil A, okay, good, good. Yeah, you got any you got any good dad jokes for us? Orientation dad? You know, I don't know how funny this is because it's kind of a serious thing, but uh -huh. um, they just passed a law in Hawaii. You are no longer allowed to laugh out loud in public in Hawaii. And you know they say things down there that are funny that you want to laugh at, but you can't laugh out loud. The only thing they're allowed to do is have like a low ha. <laughs> That's a good one, orientation, Dad. That's, That's really bad. funny. Oh, hang on. That's my wife. I got to go. Okay. Oh, All right. bye. Thanks we'll for joining us. We'll see you later. All right. We'll be back soon. We're about to wrap up Giving Day 2024. It is not too late to give. So head on over to givingday.olemiss.edu and give now. Let's end strong, guys.
Hey y'all, my name's Madeline. Welcome back to the Giving Day Interviews. Today I'm here with Laura Divin brown with the Ole Miss Office of Financial Aid. And today we're just gonna talk about the Ole Miss Opportunity Program, which is one of the financial aid scholarships. So Laura, can you tell us a little bit about the Ole Miss Opportunity Program? Sure, um, Ole Miss Opportunity, or what we sometimes call OMO, is a pretty special program. It is a scholarship that we offer to Mississippi freshmen who demonstrate significant financial need. So uh, this is something where we're looking for students who are Pell eligible and have family incomes of $40,000 or less. And what we actually offer is we ensure that students have enough free money, um, whether it's you know, between scholarships and grants, to cover full-time tuition and allowances for housing and meals for up to four years. I really consider it one of the best guarantee programs that I have heard of in the country. Um, and this is something that we've been really proud of. It started in 2010, 2011. Hmm. Um, we also offer students benefits such as priority for work study and opportunities to participate in some mentoring and success programs to help um, them with transition to college, mm -hmm. um, doing well in class. Um, so it's a comprehensive support that we can offer these students. Yeah, that's awesome. That sounds like such a great opportunity and something that many students can benefit from and also mm -hmm. ways for other students to like get involved and maybe help their fellow students. Um, so what are some of the things y'all have been working on this year slash in the future? This year we've actually been doing a lot of partnerships. Um, getting together with other offices across campus so that we can strengthen the support for the program. So there's been some committees that we've pulled together and we're looking at things from a number of fronts. One is that um, we're actually reaching out to the current OMO students themselves, asking them what they felt they got out of the program, mm -hmm. what are some ways we can enhance it. Um, we're also looking for um, how can we best promote this program to Mississippi residents across the, the state to let them know we actually have this? Um, and another way is looking at how can we enhance the benefits? You know, I've mentioned we have coverage for students to cover some of the basics, the tuition, housing, and meals. But we would also love, for example, in the future to offer coverage for books and supplies for their courses. Um, so some of the things we're doing, I think, are kind of exciting. People are coming up with some great ideas about how we can really be there for their those students and ensure they can get to graduation. Mm -hmm. That sounds like some pretty awesome stuff y'all have coming mm -hmm. up. Um, so how can people get involved with this? Well, obviously, um, one, one big way is to help with the financial commitment that our institution has made for this program. Um, so that, you know, so in that regard, any contribution helps with that program to support it, to make sure that we've got the funding now and into the future. Um, but we also have um, these other partners on, on campus, like the Fast Track program that offers um, mentoring and help for freshmen to help them make that transition to school. Um, Grove Scholars is for um, students um, from the OMO program that are in STEM fields to be able to have some support. They can reach out to those programs as well and find out what is the best way to help mm -hmm. these students be able to complete their schooling. Yeah. Awesome. So why is Giving Day so important to the Ole Miss Opportunity Program? Well, I will say that um, the University of Mississippi has always had a strong commitment to OMO since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And when we offered it initially, it was with no private support. Um, but as you can imagine, especially these days at an institution that's growing so much, there's a lot of demand for funding. And in order for us to ensure that this program is stable for the long haul, the private contributions that are now coming in to support it have really meant a lot. I think it really makes a difference because that will help us be able to have this be a program that generations will benefit from. Right, right. And it'll be an ongoing project that, mm -hmm. I don't know, it'd be great for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so where do you see y'all in the next few years? Well, I'm hoping that we increase the numbers of students who can be eligible for it. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we're able to enhance the benefits um, for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that there'll be people who will be able to look back on it over the years and say that this program mm -hmm. was what helped them actually get their college right. degree. Right. I can only imagine the help y'all have done to people's lives and everything. Well, throughout I think the something years. like Ole Miss Opportunity can really be be life changing. It's right. a game changer. Um, sure. So being able to offer substantial support 
that sometimes makes people realize, you know, maybe I can afford college after all. Maybe right. there really is a place for me to be able mm -hmm. to do that. I think it opens the eyes of, of a lot of students and their families to see that we've got something like this out there. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so what impact do the donors have? Huge. I guess that's <laughs> the best answer I can say is I think they have a huge impact. Mm -hmm. um, again, being able to provide help towards that financial commitment means that we'll have that program. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's also been great for people to show the support they've shown for it so that um, we're a community that's supporting this. I feel like offering a program like OMO is something that a flagship school like ours um, lets us, you know, we're, we're able to then be a leader, right. a leader in our state for helping people get a college degree. And the donors that step forward to help us in all their ways of being generous, you know, has, has meant a lot, you mm -hmm. know, to know that people see that this is important. Because I do think that, um, you know, talking to donors, you know, what I would want to say is, you know, thank you for, um, for understanding that giving somebody a leg up in life is one of the most important things mm -hmm. that you can ever do. Right. And so really any sort of contribution can help. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that excite you about working for the Financial Aid Office, specifically for the Ole Miss Opportunity Program? I guess that's a good question. I mean, <laughs> I've actually been in financial aid since, I guess if I'm telling on myself, since 1995. <laughs> I wasn't the director then. I've mm -hmm. obviously kind of grown in the office. But to see our institution step forward with a large-scale need-based scholarship program like this, that has really meant a lot. It's been something mm -hmm. that I, I am happy to say I was here when it was created. I went to, I was a part of the original meetings in order to discuss it, looking at what we can do to support these students. Um, as a financial aid administrator, my office and I are always trying to help people afford college. That's what we do. And to see our own school step forward with a commitment of this sort has been amazing mm -hmm. and you know really great to see that that we actually have something like that um, personally I was a first-generation student I know what it's like for the students that can struggle who might um, have to take on extra jobs while they're they're a full-time student maybe taking on a lot of loan debt mm -hmm. um, trying to figure out how they're gonna make it sometimes having to drop out for periods of time Sometimes you don't come back. So if you have something that you can count on to make a financial plan, mm -hmm. it is huge. No, yeah. And so when I look back on it, personally, I think it's, it's fulfilling to be able to say we have something like this. Right. And I think it's something Ole Miss should be proud of. No, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. um, so is there anything you'd like to say to the people who have already donated? Uh, big, sincere thank you, I guess, <laughs> is the best thing I can say because uh, it's giving a lot of students hope that they're going to be mm -hmm. able to, to get their degree. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, it shows, again, the values that we have. It shows that Ole Miss is a community, and we're helping the state. I think it's an important commitment. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Um, so is there anything else you would like to add before we go? No, um, I will say that I just appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. Being able to promote it is something that I'm hoping we'll be able to do mm -hmm. to get the word out about it. There's still a lot of people who haven't heard that we have a program like this. Right. Um, financial aid is, you know, what we do is we kind of help manage the programs, get the money to the students, but mm -hmm. we need all the help we can get mm -hmm. to ensure that there's, you know, s um, strong funding for it forever, that the word gets out about it. Mm -hmm. Any ways that people can help with that, we really appreciate it. And so thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for joining us and agreeing to come and speak. Um, it's so important for everyone to learn about all the different opportunities there are for students on campus and to also know that their gifts are making, um, you know, changing lives and like making a difference. Um, Absolutely. And I think, you know, programs like OMO is are very important because every student deserves a chance to get an education. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Remember Rebel Nation, it's not the size of the gifts, but the number of gifts that count today. The time is now. Make a gift and help your favorite areas around campus. Gifts can be made through Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, and all major credit cards. To make a gift, visit givingday.olemiss.edu. Help us spread the word once you've given and post about it on social media using the hashtag Ole Miss Giving Day. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please come back for more Giving Day content.
Thanks to your generous support, the Ole Miss Business School continues to make a positive impact in tomorrow's world. Thank you for including your gift during Giving Day 2024. Thank you for your gifts in support of 2024 Giving Day for the University Libraries. Your gifts are greatly appreciated by our students and they use them every day that they come in here. On behalf of the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement, thank you. No matter how big or small your gift was throughout Giving Day 2024, we sincerely appreciate you and your generosity. Know that your gifts will go to support students not only today, but for generations to come. Thank you. Hello, I'm Julia Aubrey, director of the Ford Center. Thank you so much for your donations on Giving Day. We're looking forward to having the opportunity to see new spotlights in our theater. And thank you for everything that you do for the arts. Thank you for all of your gifts for our 2024 Giving Day for the Sally McDonald Barstale Honors College. Your gifts will make a difference today and for generations to come. Thanks. Thank you for contributing to the School of Journalism and New Media on Giving Day. Your gift will make a meaningful impact today and beyond. I'm Viola A. Koff, Dean of the School of Engineering. I want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for your gifts for Giving Day 2024. Your gifts and support would go a long way to help our students in our programs. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for your gift on Giving Day 2024. The most important thing we do here at the law school is focus on our students. When you give, you help our students succeed and that success transforms lives. Thank you for all you do for our students. Thank you for supporting the graduate school and investing in our graduate students on Giving Day. We appreciate your continued support now and in the future. I wanna thank you for your gifts to the Division of Outreach during Giving Day 2024. Your continued support helps generations of Mississippians. You help us provide high quality learning experiences that are designed to appeal to a wider variety of Ole Miss students, including working parents, place-bound individuals, and people re-entering college after a significant time away from their studies. Thanks again for helping students from elementary age to college to lifelong learning. Thank you so much for your support of Giving Day 2024 to the College of Liberal Arts. Your support means so much, not only to our faculty and our students, but it allows us to do so many things that uh, we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So thank you very much. Thank you for your gift to the School of Pharmacy during Giving Day 2024. Your gift, along with the gift of others, makes a huge impact for our School of Pharmacy and for the university now and for generations to come. Thank you for your support and hotty toddy. Hi everybody. I'm Peter Grangy, and I serve as Dean in the School of Applied Sciences. And I just wanted to thank you for the gifts that you're giving during Giving Day 2024. Your generosity is impacting so many of our students, and it will impact students for years to come. Thank you. I want to thank every one of you who have responded to our Giving Day Fund Appeal with deep and sincere gratitude for the difference you're making. Our supporters not only sustain us, they inspire us. And your generosity will notably advance the missions of our acclaimed academic museum and our National Historic Landmark Literary Heritage Site. Thank you so much. We are grateful for your continued support of the Patterson School of Accountancy during Giving Day 2024. Your gifts, along with the generosity of others, combine to make a lasting impact on the lives of Ole Miss students now and for generations to come. Thank you for your support. Hi, my name is David Rock, Dean of the School of Education at the University of Mississippi. I want to personally thank you for your amazing support. Your gifts on Giving Day 2024 truly make an everlasting impact on education in Mississippi and beyond. Our faculty, staff, and students are tremendously grateful for your commitment to education. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hey y'all, my name's Madeline. Welcome back to the Giving Day Interviews. Dear Ole Miss family, my name is Samantha Seb, Daniel Connor, Joe Curry, Piper Lind, you can call me Sam. I chose to attend the University of Mississippi because when I visited Oxford while attending my admitted student tour, it immediately felt like home. I always felt welcomed and celebrated. I'm originally from Australia, Mississippi, and when I first chose the University of Mississippi back in 2012, I was 18 years old. 
Ole Miss lifted me and provided me with the tools and resources to build my confidence and make a difference in the world around me. I completed an accounting degree, and actually, I was a Hall of Fame graduate. This year, my fellow students elected me as Miss Ole Miss. My education would not be possible without the support of the donors who have established a scholarship in their name. I've been able to focus solely on my education, my research, and my personal and career development. I was recently elected Mr. Ole Miss, and this would not have been possible without the support, guidance, and mentorship of individuals within the Honors College, Lot Leadership Institute, and the Ole Miss Women's Council. The majority of my educational experiences were covered through donor funding, and I'm extremely appreciative of those individuals who have helped me achieve my educational goals. Today is Giving Day. Giving Day is for everyone, not just major donors. If you're a donor, your funding and support allows students like me to take advantage of every educational opportunity at Ole Miss without the burden of having to worry about paying for our education. There are so many important programs to support today. In many ways, you can show your love for Ole Miss. From a $10 gift to a million dollar gift, Giving Day is for everyone who cares about the University of Mississippi. If you're already a donor, I hope you continue to give generously to what you love about Ole Miss. If you've never given back to the university before, today is the perfect day to start. This time of year in Mississippi might seem bleak. The grove and the campus are quiet for now. Bare trees, cold air, and empty sidewalks are still with us for a little while. The campus will soon come alive with the burst of spring. The sun will stay up a little longer Crack of the bat will bring down showers in right field. The azaleas, wisteria, and dogwoods will show off their finest. Not only on the square, but everywhere there will be music and dancing in the streets. The start of spring will give birth to new lessons, new ideas, and new discoveries. Spring is for immersing yourself in friendships, the life of the campus, and the completion of the academic year. Oxford and Ole Miss anticipate your return for spring. Make the most of it, and you'll keep coming back year after year after year. Are you ready? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Walking with Champions. I am your host, Lucas Sweeney, and today is actually a very, very special episode because we are joined with none, none other than the Chancellor Glenn Boyce. Chancellor Boyce, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Lucas. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you. Yeah, so let's just get, let's get right into it. Sounds so, good. Of course, there are a lot of crazy and exciting things happening on campus this year, including having the largest freshman class in university history. So I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about the class of 2027 overall. Well, we're incredibly excited. Obviously, we had almost 5,300 new freshmen come, which is by far the largest class we've ever had. But also, we've got the largest enrollment in the history of the university as well. And these last few freshman classes have been extraordinary academic classes. Uh, retention rates here are getting to the point where freshmen are 88, 89%. We're very, very proud of them and their academic achievements as well. And many of these classes are coming with overall GPAs above 3.6 and high ACT scores and SATs. So we're just as excited about um, the efforts that our students are putting forward academically when they arrive and the type of uh, work they're doing in the classroom just bespeaks the quality and the foundation that they've been given uh, as they came through their high school years. All right, and then of course, if the student body is growing, you're gonna have to have an expanding campus as well. So yes. can you just tell me a few ways that the campus is also growing this year? Well, I can tell you, and, and Lucas, I wish there was a way to immediately solve parking problems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think the students would applaud that more than anything else. <laughs> and I get that, I do understand. Uh, but yeah, we, we immediately need dormitory space. 
Uh, obviously, our freshmen are required to live on campus, and that isn't going to change because that's part of the success model in our first year experience. And so in turn, we need dormitories yesterday. And so we're about to build three new dormitories. Uh, they won't be ready till the fall of 26. It'll be about 920 to 950 new beds. But in the meantime, we've got to do some more apartment leases and we've got to work very, very hard at how we're going to house our students. And I'll tell you, Luke, it's just as important to me is the idea that uh, our upperclassmen need to be able to find housing as well. And that's a concern because as you take up every single dormitory bed that you have for freshman students, you wanna make sure that your upperclassmen have proper housing and that they can afford to have housing here in Oxford. Yeah, and then with all of these campus changes, of course, it's gonna be a little pricey. So can you tell me the ways that the University of Mississippi is able to raise the funds for these incredible new uh, advancements? Yeah, we have, we have tremendous support. And uh, of course, we have tre tremendous support from our alumni base. and. We're doing, we're having one of the greatest uh, fundraising years that we've ever had in the past. Uh, and that's been very, very beneficial to us because that allows us to use funding for scholarships and for a lot of different avenues where we can take and then take the monies that we have in our operational budgets and pay off notes and bonding in order to build dormitories. So it all works as one big puzzle. You know, you get money from the state government and that is incredibly supportive and helpful. Then you get money from the federal government. And then of course, most of our universities run on tuition dollars, Lucas. So it's very, very important to have enrollment, but we try to keep our tuition as low as we possibly can. Because the one thing I don't want to have happen, I don't want my students coming out with such tremendous debt burdens that they take and have to spend 20 and 25 years of their life paying back student loans. So it's difficult to access credit for houses and for cars and for if they want to start their own companies and businesses, accessing small business loans and things of that nature. So it's very, very important to us that we try to keep our tuition as low as we, we possibly can. And when you have to use tuition for pretty much everything, that's somewhat of a challenge. Yeah, all right, well, that's some good stuff. Um, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Is there anything else you want to tell the people at home before we get, sign off today? Oh, yes, it, we're, we're incredibly excited about the trajectory and the, the uh, national brand that we are as a university. Uh, as Lucas and I are walking down through here today, we've got over 900 students and families coming to visit us today uh, just to see what the University of Mississippi is all about. And we're incredibly excited about the future and where we're headed with this, um, this whole idea that this is a great place to come. It's a hospitable place. And the culture here is we are absolutely committed and geared towards student success and want to see every single one of our students walk that stage. All right. Well, once again, Chancellor Boyce, thank you so much for coming out with us today. It's been a real pleasure. And you guys at home, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you want to stay up to date with all of the Ole Miss social media and watch more episodes of Walking with Champions, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back to the Giving Day live stream. We wanted to cut back really quick as we head into the last hour of Giving Day 2024 to provide a few updates. So uh, we have the TUI buzzer beater challenge still going on. And right now the School of Law is winning at last check with 42 gifts. So we'll see if they can hold on to that lead. Right now our top calls by donor, meaning the school or area of campus that has the most donors, School of Ed is leading with 648 gifts total right now we are well over 11 million dollars which is absolutely incredible and we're almost to 3,000 total gifts so let's make that happen head on over to givingday.olemiss.edu and give now remember you can give through venmo paypal apple pay and all major credit cards so head over to the website and give now and we'll see you back soon hotty toddy
Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream. We are headed into the final 15 minutes of Giving Day 2024. Wanted to hop on real quick and provide some numbers, some totals where we're at. So right now, uh, School of Law is still winning the 2E Buzzer Beater Challenge with 80 gifts. That number has probably gone up since last I checked. School of Ed still has the most donors and overall our total, we are well over $11 million and we have surpassed 3,000 gifts. We are now at 3,118 gifts which is a giving day record this has been incredible and I'm I know I've said this in every segment but that number keeps going up I mean I've had to re refresh my page like 10 times in the past five minutes and it keeps going up so in the next 15 minutes it definitely will so tune back in around 5 45 and we'll reveal our final number as we wrap up giving day 2024 see you soon hotty toddy
Welcome back to our Giving Day live stream. This is our last segment before we wrap as we are headed into 548 p.m. I am joined by Ms. Charlotte Parks, Vice Chancellor for Development. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, this has been the biggest Giving Day yet. Are you so excited about that? Oh my goodness, the biggest in every metric, every way. Yes, absolutely. I think we had the most influencers ever, the most dollars, the most donors, the most gifts, the most yes. matches and challenges. Yes, the influencers were so, so thankful for them to give all their time and their networks that most areas of campus supported and the largest viewership ever. Wow, wow. What has been your favorite part about Giving Day? Oh, the partnership with the University Marketing and Communications. You all have made this Giving Day with the videos, the live streaming. It's made it fun for all our donors and viewers, and thank you so much. Of course, we've had a great time. We have had a great time over here. We also had some incredible marquee gifts happen. Oh, yes. Carolyn and Pete Golding gave 100000 to the school, Patterson School of Accountancy. Jan Pilko, $1.5 million wow. to the Sally Barksdale Honors College. Jean and Jerry Jordan, $4 million to the School of Crazy. Journalism and New Media. And Barbara Beckman, $5 million to the School of Engineering. Okay. Incredible. Anything else you want to say before we reveal our total? Thank you so much, everyone. We greatly appreciate every dollar, every cheer, every bit of help. Yes, absolutely. Okay, total, we came in at $11.5 million. Absolutely incredible, incredible, incredible. We had 3,163 gifts, which is also record-breaking. Oh my gosh, Absolutely so incredible. Thank you so much again to our donors. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next year. Happy Giving Day, hottie toddy. Yay! Yay.